Not <laughs> Welcome to We Are Libertarians for this week. I am your host, Chris Spangle. Uh, with me around the table uh, is Greg Lind. Chris, how are you, buddy? The savior of We Are Libertarians. I don't know about savior. I didn't uh, come back after three days. No, you came back after 30 minutes, and yes. that's even better. I feel like I'm not going to get a stolen pagan holiday named in my honor. We'll explain why after we introduce the rest of the cast for this episode. Uh, today's guest host, Rob Kendall. Chris was so, uh, or uh, Greg was so brave, Chris. He uh, ventured <laughs> ventured down 65 to uh, several uh, shopping centers to find a recorder. The he, heart of suburbia. It was uh, it was so brave. He, he came back with a very big recorder, too. It was very wonderful. And then Harry Price joins us. Harry, how are you? Going good. Spent the most of the day changing passwords on all my Google and Yahoo account because there are rumors out there that some hackers have stolen passwords from Google and Yahoo. So if you have a Google or Yahoo account, change your passcodes. Also, hook up the two-factor authentication. It's like Harry thought that was the last time he was going to get to talk during the show, and that's what he wanted to say. <laughs> By the way, Harry he told us in the pre-show that he only uses his talents for good, which yes. is a great yeah. thing. Well, he's a white hat. Yeah. He's a black white hat. Right. Yeah. You know, I try to He's my, a racist. Yeah, I try to keep my white hat on, make sure, you know, I'm trying to make IT great again. I'm going to build a firewall around my <laughs> network, and I'm going to make hackers pay for it. Because Harry, Harry could cause some major damage if he wanted to. He does. He's oh. a butt commander hat and on top of a do-rat. Yes. Yes, I could. So, uh, choose not to. I don't, I don't know what happened. Listen, we've had this recorder that we've used for four years, and the, the recorder gave out today. Uh, our little Zoom H2N that we, we go out of a nice Yamaha board that, that Greg bought uh, into a Zoom H2N, and uh, now we... We triggered the shit out of our recorder. We did, yeah. <laughs> for those of you wondering what, what equipment we use, we use the uh, SM48s in the nice cords that go into the Yamaha MG124C, and then we take that out to a Zoom H2N. Pretty sexy, isn't it? Sounds great. Did see, you hear that? That was the sound of panties dropping. Do you see, <laughs> see, Rob? Do you see how big my board is? You know, you're really overselling your equipment, and as people will tell you, uh, it's better to underpromise and then overperform than than uh, oversell. And see, what Rob is doing is he's upset because I've been making fun of the size of his board for the last few days. It's very oh. small. He's got a very small board. Yeah. Uh, I saw him. I can get in anywhere. Can you hold board. your board up? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this board. <laughs> this board is great. Yes. He's got a very small board. That I can tell you. Yeah. Chris wishes he had my board. Listen, there's no problem in that area, I assure you. He's <laughs> got a very big board. Uh, we've got eight inputs over here. You have four. That's very small. That is true. Although I've had my board for ten years now. Um, and seven with, with my good old little four, four entry over here. Have I ever told you the story about my board? No. How I got my board? You shouldn't tell that. Yes. but So you shouldn't tell that on the podcast. Oh, I shouldn't tell that? I don't think Statue of Limitations is up. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm remembered. laughs> Does this have anything to do with a certain um, FBI investigation on Martin Martinsville? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Uh, so, yes, the, the Zoom, we, we plugged it in, uh, and the external input was not working. It had died. I don't know if Morty's killed it. Yeah, but, I got the replacement just in case, because that might be happening again on the 23rd. Yeah, May 23rd, we're going to be back at Morty's Comedy Joint doing a live show. We posted the, uh, this is May 5th today. Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, if you go to the We Are Libertarians Facebook page. Greg had his taco bowl. Yeah. That's right. And uh, <laughs> Last one, then the wall goes up. I'm trying to get it in. And uh, if you go to the We Are Libertarians website, by the time you hear this, I'll have that post on the website. Uh, or the Facebook page, you can find the event page, May 23rd. The I heard you guys killed it. We did. Yes. Yeah. So we haven't done a show since because we were very tired. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we went from the Libertarian, we went from Trump to a podcast to the Libertarian Party of Indiana convention to the We Are Libertarians live show and then a couple events. Right after that? Yeah, and we were just exhausted. Yeah. You guys packed the house, too. We did. We, we expected... Nobody. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> friends and family only, right. which no. didn't show. Right. <laughs> no friends, no family. That's Thanks, I Rob. <laughs> I was out knocking on doors. No, you were moderating a candidate's Oh, party. that's right, I was. I was helping democracy. And we had, uh, so the club, I told them, they said, so how many people are you thinking? We need to have waiters, waitresses. I said, ah, probably about 50. And they heard 15, yeah. because that's what they, they thought, oh, it's so cute that he thinks 50 people are going to show up for a, a libertarian podcast mm -hmm. at a comedy club. But we had 53 people come out. 
Uh, we were able to take the money that we made that night and plug it right back into hosting. We got superior hosting uh, to what we had, saved a little money. So thank you to everybody who comes out. It, listen, if you come to the show, not only are you coming to We Are Libertarians Live, you're putting a little money back into We Are Libertarians. And that comes with an expectation that we will actually do better next time. Yeah, So, <laughs> and we're, we're taking that and plowing it right back in to grow this thing and spread the word. Uh, spread and, the seeds of liberty. Yeah, so the person, so here's the deal. We're taking a little bit of the money that we made, and we're um, going to get... He's got a flow chart here, people. Yeah. I see the That's bot. Stop the iPad it. Right right stop seeking it. Put that down. <laughs> Hillary Clinton's going to email that to herself if you don't Greg, put that. give me that. He, listen, he's <laughs> out of the caucus. caucus. Yep. He's out of the caucus. <laughs> there are no more fun caucus Sorry. for Rob Kendall. You can't handle freedom, so you don't get it. So... I uh, thought I was supposed to show it off to everybody. No. It's no, self, no, no this isn't you. your board. Stop it's, it. It's like Nixon's uh, Vietnam plan. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Strategic. Uh, so the person who brings the most... So here's the deal. We had a lot of people that we know show up, and we love those people. Yes. But what we really want to do with this thing every single month uh, here in Indianapolis at Morty's Comedy Joint towards the end of the month, uh, it's it's if you have people in your life that don't know much about politics but are kind of interested right now, where they don't know much about libertarianism, but they're kind of interested right now, those are the people that we want to come with you. So bring those people, not just the hardcore libertarians in your life. This is an, this is a show because it's easier an easier sell than a business meeting. Right. Uh, or a convention. Or a convention or something along those lines. You guys did great at the convention, by the way. We did. We killed it. Um, but... We. This is really veteran we, journalist Greg. We literally Lance. killed it. Yeah. Really yeah. Came up we aborted the convention. <laughs> we want you to bring non-political people or people that are just kind of on the fringes and are not interested. So if you bring, so we know who showed up last time, and if you bring the most people that did not come last time, the most first timers to a We Are Libertarians live, you can make fifty dollars. I'm gonna hand you a fifty dollar. Oh, yeah. Fifty dollar Visa gift card. So if I can get, uh, let's see, I, Dad likes you guys. Mm -hmm. All right, them out there. Yep, there'll be beer at this thing, right? You can yep. buy a beer. Oh, you can oh, buy. Ton. Okay, yeah. Yeah. tons of beer, tons of food, great right. tacos, yeah, <laughs> great burritos. <laughs> it's a it's a Mexican grill plus a comedy joint. So the did, walk is on. And now is there a fee to get into the event? Five bucks. Five bucks. That's yeah. it. Right. But okay. I'm gonna give you forty five dollars back. Right. So so literally, if I brought five people, that might win it for me. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. So, so for a $25 investment, I so, can get you can pull it off. $50. Yeah. Yes, gain the system. I highly encourage everyone to yeah. gain the system. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, yeah. because guess what? They're going to have a great time, and then immediately after the podcast is done, live band karaoke starts at oh, 9 p.m. Yeah. That's exciting. So you can stand up in front of all the rest of us and sing with a live band, sing karaoke. And we'll be participating as well. Greg yeah. and I can do a uh, duet of violins in the stream. Yes. yes. So yes, I love it. I, I think people the gambler. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, uh, Lizzie's yeah, going Anderson. on a vacation that week. We so should, we she's should gone. Go yeah, I'll take that Wednesday off. Yeah, so Wednesday, Tuesday off. You were there. You were there, Harry. Ha de describe the event from your perspective. Since I was in the back of the room, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spangle <laughs> totally <laughs> rose at you. Yeah, I was sitting in the back. See everything. Uh, it was nice. There was a lot of energy. A lot more people than I did really did expect to come. Everyone had a blast. I was, I was really shocked to see that many people there and having as much fun as they had because it was a very relaxed event. It wasn't really like huge, like hitting everyone with politics. It was just having, it was just like having the podcast here at the uh, We're Libertarian Studios, but you know, at the comedy joint. Right. Yeah. Morty's a place for comedy. Yeah. 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 It, it, it was the, a great time. And like I said, the guacamole, I wasn't was expecting much, you know, working with a bunch of Mexicans, but uh, coming there, it was like, wow, this is actually some good guac. This is guac tastes great. This There's is just... authentic, authentic Jeb Bush guac. Yeah, yeah. It's not like, you know, they're not making the guac at your table. They're not that good. But, you know, it's still pretty good guac. All right. We saw Gilbert Gottfried at Morty's one time. Oh, wow, yeah. yeah. That's a, it's a good event. It's a good yeah. venue. They're, they're great. They, so we, we exceeded their expectations, their servers' expectations. I talked to the waitresses and waiters afterwards, and the two waitresses just were over the moon. They just said, listen, everybody was so nice. They tipped really well. We really want to be here. We had a blast. You know, they go, they do fun shows all the time, and they said this is one of the most fun, fun times that we've had. All the, all the, you know, thanks to Tony and Bowers and McComas and everybody at Morty's for having us out and giving us this monthly opportunity. And really, it's not just for us. It is a lot of fun for us, but it is a little more work for us. 
Uh, and the reason we want to do it is, A, we want to make a little money to put back into advertising the show, but mostly we want it to be a really cool outreach event for local libertarians. And, and listen, you've got 17 days, so if you want to travel in, then please do. I know a lot of people said, hey, can you do it on the weekends? Well, they make tens of thousands of dollars <laughs> for the professional comedians that come in. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we're on Monday don't night. Don't tell Rosa jokes. Right. <laughs> Uh, so I want to I want to thank a few people who really made that possible. Uh, first and foremost is Jason Doolittle. Jason is in Texas, and he sent me a message and he said, "Listen, I couldn't get off work, so I can't fly up from Texas to be at the live show, but can I donate my airfare?" And he did. And so everybody that showed up to the first We Are Libertarians live got a beautiful poster that's hanging up on the wall and left there. Uh, and uh, an 11 by 17 that you can frame. Why is it not a photo of Greg? Yeah, well, we have that's on the back. <laughs> he is the star. I am, I like to be Robin. I don't, I like to be behind the scenes. Right. I put in 20 hours a week so Greg can put in two. <laughs> uh, so Jason Doolittle helped fund uh, those posters and a bunch of advertising. Kelly Curran, Dustin Reed, Kyle Trowbridge, Miranda Barnett, you guys all gave contributions that really helped fund the uh, marketing of it, the outreach Miranda of gave? it. Yeah, Miranda. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Miranda. Uh, so you guys really made it a really special event. We were able to look professional. We had an outreach table with Chloe and the Advocates for Self-Government giving out quizzes. A little Jeff Vibbert scored 9,100 on the quiz. Wow. Uh, and it so it was, yeah. it, it was a really fun event. And a lot of it came, uh, we got a lot of extra people there because of those donations and we were able to do Facebook marketing. And we added a bunch of new people to the subscription feed and the Facebook page because we were marketing the event on Facebook through advertising. Uh, I want to run through uh, the, our monthly donors. You guys have been awesome. It keeps growing. Dennis Binington, Jeremiah Morrill, Brandon Schilling, Christopher Lane, Austin Broderson, Sam Naimi, CJ Rodine, Aaron Jones, Mark English, and Brian Wolgamuth. You guys give every single month, uh, and you guys are helping... This is Bruce Kendall's donation. Bruce Kendall is donating again? He got us some allowance. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, well, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks to Bruce and all of you donors. You all go to help fund new equipment and Facebook likes because we're growing this thing like hotcakes. And now... And, and $10 of that is from Haley, too. She doesn't all, know it yet, but yeah. she wants to be on the donor list. She's, we'll talk about her in a minute. <laughs> uh -oh. uh, and the, the, fee, the following people we haven't mentioned yet, uh, but I want to thank them because they're very special. They donate per episode uh, through Patreon. Roger Paxton from the Lava Flow podcast. If you don't listen, you've got to go and thank him by hitting subscribe. He has a great show. He really does. If yeah. we are too, you know, too statist for you and cover too mainstream topics, Roger does an amazing job on more li pure type uh, libertarian issues. I learn so much every time I listen to Me Roger's too. show, the Lava Flow podcast. I feel like the worst libertarian every time yeah. I listen to it. Joshua Sexton, Ryan Graham, Richard McGurr, Toby Stoltzfus, and uh, Tim McCusick, and Todd Singer. So thank you guys for donating. If you want to donate, you can go to the front page of WeAreLibertarians.com. On the right sidebar, you can donate too. Thank you guys so much. You guys uh, have exceeded our expectations over the last few months in terms of contributing. Uh, and, man, we have added so many new subscribers to the podcast because we are able to go and advertise on Facebook. Will this be some story where I'll read about uh, Chris living in a penthouse somewhere? Not until we start a pack. Yeah. Yes. Wall pack. Oh, I will be very powerful. And uh, Bruce Thoreau. Uh, yes. So thank you guys. Uh, it's, it's, I want to ask Rob a question. Oh God. <clears throat> now, Rob, you have a beautiful girlfriend. She's very wonderful. I do too. Yes, I, you do. I mean, I have a beautiful girlfriend. Right. Uh, go ahead. No, I'm. I'm good. All right. All right. But She's a talented comedian as well. That's all yeah, I was going to add. And she will be opening at Morty's Comedy Joint for us. And for the We Are Libertarians. For We Are Libertarians live <laughs> on May 23rd. Right. Our special guest at that podcast will be Rupert from Survivor, former gubernatorial candidate. Very excited. So you can come out and get an autograph, meet him. Can Shall I get one out? of those uh, posters? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I'll we'll give sign you, it. Yeah, you just, donated, you just donated $20, so I can give you half of one now, and then if you bring 20 more, I'll give you the other half. i got to get 40 bucks to get one of those? Right. No. No, no. I'll give you one before you Because we can arrange that. I mean, it's Bruce's allowance. I know. Well, there. he's a good dog. Uh, I'll even roll it up so he can chew on it. But you have a beautiful girlfriend. She's very wonderful. She is delightful. She is just charming. She is pretty. She is political. She is smart. She is 
beautiful. She's so great. She is great. And we've been wanting to have her on the podcast, right, Greg? Yeah, I I, I got to spend the evening with her and her sister and Rob at uh, the Lincoln Day dinner last Thursday. Greg week. was a superstar at the Republican Lincoln Day dinner for Hendricks County. Shocking that anyone had ever heard of We Are Libertarians and there are people running for Todd office. Todd Young that, listen, body checked him. I got body checked by Todd Young. He did not I, appreciate the memes. It was pretty weak for a Marine. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I wasn't impressed. <laughs> and I, Pete Miller gave you the evil eye. Yeah, yeah. By the way, I want to say rest in peace to the Pete Miller campaign and his career as a state senator. Don't Throwing you? Don't you <laughs> I'm hey, sorry, it's coming to an end. Forget, Lion Pete. Lion Pete. Which forget, apparently is trending at the state house. It is. <laughs> forget you for not inviting me to the Lincoln Day dinner because I would like to go uh, meet some Republicans. Well, I told you I was very worried about your behavior at the Trump rally. Mr. Trump invited you to his venue, and I did not feel you were in the best interest of Mr. Trump. It really bothered me. Mr. Trump kicked two sweet teen girls who just happened to be wearing the wrong thing and then kicked a girl in a Constitution t-shirt. I can't believe Donald Trump would kick somebody out of a venue that was wearing a Constitution t-shirt. He must not have known what that was. But don't you derail my show. This is our show. Don't you come on here and try to derail the show. Let's get back to the topic at hand. Uh, today, six. I thought we were going to talk about me meeting Donald Trump. That's six, what I was sold at. Well, that six, was false pretenses. It was really just so you could be scolded. Six forty-one p.m. <laughs> Chris Bengel to Haley. I take it personally that you never want to come on Wall. LOL. I do want to. <laughs> I'm just never invited. You were invited tonight, didn't Rob tell you? No. He's in trouble then. LOL. LOL. I really. Really, really want to be on sometime. I tell Rob all the time that. No one was LOLing at about 6.47 p.m. when the phone rang in my car outside the uh, Spangle Studios. While he was getting ready in the nude. <laughs> yeah, he was early, Greg. Uh, that's <laughs> just a no-no. I'm always on time. Ten minutes, no, you were They call me punctual yeah. Rob. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> tells me this. <laughs> ten, ten minutes. I, it, it, ten minutes early, I'm sitting on the couch with my boxers. And I hear, ding, 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 ding. A very dainty knock, very light knock. Well, I was sitting drinking a beer on his porch. <laughs> it was a very, it was a very small, uh, delicate knock. Um, it was, one, it's, of, it's, it's, it's it was one of these, right. you know. Oh, you, okay. Yeah. I mean, different. I wasn't really trying to get simple. him to come to the door because last time he scolded me for being early. See, I, radio, you're always taught you be 10 minutes early. If you're the guest right. at 7, you're there at 6.50. So, right, you like this Rob guy? Yeah, I like Rob, this Rob guy. Rob has very small, dainty hands. <laughs> so... I just want to know, I, I just, listen, I just want to put it out there, Haley's invited every time, and you're just not, you're, uh, you're cock-blocking us, Rob. I did a bad job. I mean, I gotta be a little candid. I'm very nervous about you having a conversation with my girlfriend that will be recorded and broadcast to the masses. Greg, back me up on this, that this is, this is, a, maybe could be a bad deal for me. It's a bad deal for anyone that is part of a major establishment party and wants their career to be tied to the success of well, those two parties. Yes. Rob's a little threatened by my alphaness, to be honest. Yeah, Rob's threatened by someone's alphaness, yeah. He's very <laughs> Yeah, Yeah, Rob's very threatened. That and the time that his girlfriend got drunk in front of me, I found out, I asked every question about their sex life and know all about it. Yeah, so, yeah, again, you say that and then you say I'm threatened by someone's alphaness. <laughs> So, you know, we get our liquored up and then put it on tape. I don't know why you'd be nervous. Because yeah. she said to me, she goes, why don't you want me there? I said, sweetheart, it's not that I don't want you there. So I'm just very nervous about the questions Greg would ask you, uh, potentially. But if you swear that you'll behave, do you swear you'll behave? What did she say to that? Uh, no, I, I'm just asking you, will you swear that you'll oh, behave? Well, well, I behave? Yes, will you be good? I always behave. I'm a gentleman. No, I feel like why you do you are, think... you're plotting. Like you were at Mr. Trump's rally when you were invited to Mr. Why Trump's Why do you think event. I'm always up to something? Because you were up to something. Greg? We're instigators. That's what we do. We I own mean, it. See, this is the funny thing is that like I'm so much worse than Greg. And Greg, Greg will like pull no punches. Right. I, I just want it to be feared, so I'm only going to do it once and make sure I don't have to use it for a very long time. But mm -hmm. I am. I'm more Machiavellian than Greg is. Yeah. And and I, I have a long memory where Greg's just kind of like you. Yeah. Do, you do too, I guess. But I it's do. You sort have to do of, something really bad. Right. All right. So, but this may. My this... my point is that everybody's always like. Greg, 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 Greg. And then everybody meets Greg, and they like him so much more than they like me. And Greg it makes a, me a little mad. Greg was a total rock star at the Lincoln Day dinner. Like, people were literally sitting there being like, I love your memes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it'd be helpful if those people would win. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think at some point the governor eyeballed you. I don't know why. I've been nothing but open and honest to Mike Pence. It's the Titleist hat. He, he saw Donor. Yeah, he saw Donor. 
He said, would you like to come to my Lincoln Day golf outing? <laughs> Although the waitress afterwards at uh, Stone Creek, she asked, like, what are you guys talking about? Like, oh, it's Lincoln Day dinner, and she thought we were trolling, you know, and she's like, oh, I was like, you know, Abraham Lincoln, the Republican, and she didn't buy it, and I'm like, I forget what she said, and I'm like, oh, yeah, us damn slave freers, we're the worst, and she just like, she went full Tumblr trigger. Well, the best part was, like, the, uh, some more establishment members were directly behind us. They were, and we talked purposefully so they could hear every word. Yeah, we, we were very... Anyway, so so I will encourage her to come on the show. I will allow t you to arrange the visit. No, no, no. I, you're out of it. No, that's what I'm saying. No, no, no. You're I out. I want you to do it. Go I'm ahead. Not, I don't trust you anymore. I don't believe you have We Are Libertarians' best heart interest at, at heart. <laughs> I believe you're obsessed with my girlfriend. Let's no. just be candid about it. I feel like there's a lot of conversation that goes on between you and my girlfriend. I feel like she's obsessed with me. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> If you could just look at Chris Spangle's Facebook Messenger app, yeah. you would see it is one-on-one -on -one conversations with over 30 women. Mm -hmm. What? Well, yeah, he's a good-looking guy. He's, yeah. I mean, that's half. leader. Yeah, it's great. And your board is huge. No, Haley and I, Haley was very sweet. There yeah. was a period of time. She's very beautiful. Haley was very sweet when, when uh, it was very cute because when <laughs> I, Emily and I hit a rough patch and right. we broke up, Haley and Rob, within the span of like five minutes, both texted me to make sure I was okay. Yeah. Uh, and so I talked to Haley a little bit during that period, but we don't. He we sent don't her a picture with his shirt off at one some point, and then he Snapchatted her some picture that was the most <laughs> egregious, appalling. Okay, disgusting. this I have to apologize for because this was a mistake. Uh -oh. <laughs> This will, I, did. I already know. <laughs> this has been a topic of conversation at a Republican dinner. <laughs> this was a mistake, and my face <laughs> is bright red. Uh -huh, it should be. Was this, I you, was, this, was, it, was that yours? No, no, okay. no, no. It was well, just a stupid meme that, like, I went to send to Jeff Vibbert, and I, I hit her, and I realized I hit her, and so I sent her a text message, and I was like, do not open that in public. We opened it together. Good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> It was, it was a, it was a, mm. a what? It was a ding dong and balls. Mm. With and sunglasses. It, it was sunglasses. <laughs> and it was very funny, wasn't it? It, it was hilarious. Well, I momentarily thought it was yours. No, no. I, I thought Spangle would not be that stupid. No, no, no. Or they I, be. I like, to, I like to, <laughs> I like to tease you, Rob, but I, I respect the bro code. But I figured you may have, that might have meant to send it That's to Emily. That's not entirely true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he would take advantage of the bro. He code. does not. Uh uh. No, he he's usually pretty good. He Listen, has rare, I asked rare, rare, rare aberrations. I asked your permission that you did. time. <laughs> well, I encourage you to have Haley on. I think she's a, a brilliant mind and uh, would do great on the We Are Libertarians show. I don't want her now. What? No, you you ruined it. I think we all have breathed a sigh of relief. You have, and you I'll look, go back to my very happy relationship. Deal with the consequences. I'll go right back to my Trump interview. <laughs> That's right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you got to interview Donald Trump. I did. It was so wonderful. And I the whole time I was sitting there, I was just thinking, I wish Greg could be here with me. <laughs> I was so jealous. I do not get jealous or envious. In that moment, I thought, what I wouldn't give to be in that room. Because the whole time I was thinking, I told the guy, to, and we'll get into it, I guess, but to take a picture, I was like, I can't wait to show this to Greg. I died. I figured Greg will just it, it, it poop his pants me. and excited. I did. I was like, I can't. That is awesome. And it was, good. It was a great interview. You did very well. Uh, it, Trump told me. I did great. He called you wonderful. It, very wonderful. And well, you got you called, you called didn't call him the God Emperor, did you? No. In the office, just uh, in, the office. in the office, we started calling him God Emperor. <laughs> and, and the guy that was running Stutzman's campaign just looks at me and there's like a frozen look on his face and then he starts laughing because he's a huge Trump fan. Oh yeah. Yeah. The God Emperor. The God Emperor. Those guys at the Stutzman campaign loved you guys by the way. You well, were, how could they not? You were the you were the fuel that kept them rolling. Oh uh, I felt bad it didn't work out. Because... Well that's okay. We got two out of three. Lion Pete went down and <laughs> Trump won. Yes. So Indiana as, was made great as, as 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 Meatloaf says two out of three ain't bad. It ain't bad. I I am in I'm wearing the hat. Mm-hmm. I I'm in a state of mourning. Did I, you listen to this interview though first? Have you listened to this interview? I haven't. Oh, it's really good. It actually is good. I haven't. I, I've not had time at all. But it's okay. I haven't how, either. So what? Did he smell good? Donald Trump. He, here's what I walked away with with two things. One is he's a genuinely very nice person in person. Mm -hmm. I believe a lot of what you see on TV is a persona. Yeah. I think it's almost like apprentice character on TV. 
And I will also say this, I don't think he has a political ideology per se. Right. I think he judges every issue based on the issue in front of him and tells you what he thinks about it. And if that happens to be a Republican philosophy... That happened today. Yeah. With minimum wage. With minimum wage. I, I think he will just tell you genuinely what he thinks. Cool. And, I, and I admire that. How do you smell, though? I didn't smell him. He's but, a man and I'm a man. But I would... What, you can smell another man. Greg's he wearing was, a nice cologne. He smells good. <laughs> he was dressed very nice. But did he smell good? I didn't smell him. He just him. looks like he wears a lot of clothes. I did not smell him. He did not. He did not smell bad. How tall is he? He's very big. He's, he's six, really right. He's six three. Really? He's, and he, you know, a lot of guys might be big guys, but they're not. They're. Th he's a big dude. Oh yeah. Like big frame. Yeah, like big guy. Like could have played football big. Hmm. Big guy. He hosts a golf outing every year, the Doral Open at his yeah. course, and Dustin Johnson's one of the tallest PJ Tour golfers. And Trump showed up on his helicopter and drove the cart himself, which is a no-no, through a crowd. And walks up to Dustin Johnson and is, I mean, just made him look beta as can be. Yeah. And Dustin Johnson's married to Paulina Gretzky. So <laughs> yeah. I was like, he, he is not king alpha. Yeah. yeah, he is yeah. king alpha. He's walking around on his course, driving his own golf cart. And that's <laughs> the biggest taboo in all of politics. No candidate should ever drive, ever. Yeah. Or pay for something. How's the handshake? What's the handshake? It was like? great. I will tell you. <laughs> so it, firm. It was very nice. There's a great photo of us uh, <laughs> right. that you can see. It, it, are, how are it was hands soft? Uh, he was a very uh, soft individual. Really? I mean, I did not. I did was not feeling his hand. Thinking, does this man have hard Most hands nice. or soft hands? But I will say, it was a firm handshake. It was a good handshake. And did you see the smile on his face when we made? Yeah, he was handshake? cheesing. I mean, he really enjoyed the interview. By the way, the interview is posted on YouTube. We should mm -hmm. just add it to the end of this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's uh, eleven minutes. It's great. Um, and at the, he actually says during the interview, then said afterwards, he goes. Man, I wish all the media was like you. You were just great. And I looked at him and I said, Well, sir, I, I'm a fan who just happens to be in the media. <laughs> that was just false pretense. That's, that's, that's a good point. But, so what did he say to that? Uh, he just he just said, Yeah, that's good. And he laughed about it. We had a you know had a little little laugh together. But the one thing I found about him was he walks in and it's like so do you want me to go through like the whole Yeah, I, I want to hear it. So they called about 8 o'clock the night before. Okay. Because you uh, didn't tell a soul. No, I didn't. I, it was, was kind of... Like, this it was, mother... It was, <laughs> and the cool thing about... And this is kind of how I knew Marlon was going to lose. Like I went off the grid for five hours the day before the election and nobody said a word. So I kind of figured, <laughs> Our campaign is officially done. <laughs> like I literally disappeared. The guy that's like in charge of Hendricks County just disappears for five hours and nobody's like... Where's Rob? <laughs> so going forward, uh, I figured uh, I'm just going to phone it in these final 48 hours. Uh, so they hire call... Rob for your next campaign. Yeah. He'll disappear the day before the election. He's a worker. I mean, I had to, you had to make a like a real quick decision because it was like you can't really tell anybody. If you want to go do this, yeah. I mean, you know, Marlon's sunk or swim at this point. We love Marlon, but you know, you kind of had a feeling right. you got to go for yourself. Mm -hmm. So they called about eight o'clock the night before, and they said, hey. Trump's going to do some interviews on Monday, because this was Sunday night. He's going to do some interviews on Monday. He wants to do an interview with you. And at this point, you how, don't... How did he know? Like, how did... They, I don't know if it's the people. I'm just, you know, I'm just told. You're not asking questions at this point. Yeah. Right. Have you applied for an interview? No, I had not applied for it. They just... I think Trump empire is very keen on who is supportive and who is not. Yeah. And yeah. for better for us, it's addictive in that way, but in a good way. Yeah, Inside we the... we were given credentials, and then we wrote our articles about attending a Trump rally, and then Joe was denied credentials in South Bend, like to Sunday. Well, that's because he's going back, right? Yeah. Well, they looked they looked at the name. You're right. They looked at Ruiz. Yeah, I think they are very aware of who is supportive and who is not. I know some of the people inside the Trump campaign. And I think they said this guy for nine months, ten months now, has taken every piece of crap from every establishment figure in the GOP and has just thrown it back at him. Let's right. throw him a bone. So they call about eight o'clock and the guy goes, hey, uh, this lady from Trump's, because everything comes out of New York. You yeah. get the figure, you get the feeling of that, but it's all sort of comes right. out of New York. They said, she will be calling you within the next two hours. You're slated to have an interview at 1045 tomorrow. Can you be here? Uh -uh. Well, I had an interview booked at 1030, which we'll talk about in a minute, hopefully. But I said, uh, yes, I can I can be there. I said, okay, you need to be there at 9 o'clock. She's going to call you and confirm. So I'm literally sitting there for like two hours just staring at my phone, shouting, come on, ring, <laughs> ring. <laughs> Save me, God Emperor. And finally, about 
I don't know, 9.45, the phone rings, and Haley's laying next to me. And I just literally, I think I may have elbowed her or something, diving for the phone. <laughs> you went full Ted Cruz. <laughs> and she looks very appalled at the fact that, like, I just, I think we were in the middle of a conversation. Was Haley okay? She was fine, because she understood the magnitude of this. This was like the <laughs> Field of Dreams moment for me. Can I, can I be honest? I'm sitting here obsessing. I'm like, I feel bad that, like, there, A, that I sent a penis picture to your girlfriend accidentally. B, that it was a topic of conversation, and C, that, like, he was genuine when he said, I don't trust you with your girlfriend, my girlfriend. <laughs> like, I, I'm sitting here going, man, am I really that bad of a person? I'm just joking with him. No, I don't believe you'd do anything, but I believe if the, op if the opportunity was presented to you, you would. Oh, no. Does that make sense? No, I'm in a committed relationship. Really? Yes, absolutely. Okay, all right. Greg, can yeah. you, will you vouch for this? Oh, yeah, when he's in a committed relationship, you know, without that, all bets are off. <laughs> No, I know that's that. totally a lie. He's very, he's very honest. No, you are me. genuinely one of the nicest yeah. people I've I, ever met. I, I no much, no matter how try or hard you try to yeah. disrupt, yeah, you're things. a great person. I, I may be a total scumbag, but I'm not. I, I may be like, I may like joke, have no. Uh, yeah, I project an image, but like push right. comes to shove, I'd be like, no, he's, he's a lot hey, like Donald Trump that way. I would, <laughs> I would immediately hang up and go. Hey Rob, you're dating a whore. Yeah. <laughs> like, which you may have done on some occasion in my life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't pull punches. But no, Haley is the last person who would ever cheat, and Greg right. or uh, Chris is the last person who I believe would ever violate the bro code. All right. So I feel very safe with you two being, you know, not involved at all. No, no. Uh, I yeah, except for not like... having my back. <laughs> I had your back. I was, <laughs> like, you know, it was a joke. So I jumped for the phone. Because <laughs> I asked you. And it's it's the Trump headquarters. Yeah. And they're like, um, so we would like to book you to do an interview with Mr. Trump tomorrow at 1045. Are you available? Was it the one girl that Ted slept with? That, did she call you? Uh, no, she did not. That was not who it was. Uh, okay. She was. By the way, all the Trump people are great. They're very nice, very wonderful, people. Very high wonderful energy. people. Very high energy. Great and people. And she literally told me, she goes, okay, I'm going to send you the information on where you need to be and when. She goes, and by the way, she goes, call me or email me at any time of the night. I'm responding to emails literally all night. So it's a very high energy. High energy. Group of people. <laughs> so uh, I'm standing then at my computer, screaming at the computer then for the email to come in um, uh, for like an hour. And then it finally comes in. <laughs> And uh, it's at the JW Marriott. So apparently Trump stays at the JW Marriott. Well, of course. That's the, the highest end hotel in town. So they say your interview's going to be at 1045. you got to get there at 9. So you get there at 9, and you go up to the, the top floor, and there's like three Secret Service guys standing there at that point. And He's getting CIA briefings. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it is it is like the real yeah. deal. So you go there, and there's a pin. And so it's like me and like five other media members. And one of them was Jim Shella, and then Kevin Rader from our, uh, THR, and then the others were national. So nobody who actually knows anything about politics. Uh, except for me. Right. Yeah. Shell's a nice guy, though. I enjoyed our conversation. We visited and chatted. Mm -hmm. Shell's going to come on my show, and it was it was very cordial. Say, say Chris Spangle. <laughs> Make sure you bring that up. Shell and I get along now, but Shell has... Uh... We'll talk off air. Okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, he, he came up to me at the Trump rally. He goes, what are you doing here? I go, they're apparently letting everybody in now. And he laughed. He thought that was funny. So we're sitting there talking. And then at some point, you know, you check in and they say, okay, yeah, you're on the list. Da, 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 da. And then at some point they go, okay, everybody out of the pen. And they bring in the bomb sniffing dog. And the dog goes through all the stuff. They're very nice about it, but you got to understand, you know, they're very worried about his safety. So yeah. go through the bomb sniffing dog. Secret Service wands you down, all that good stuff. And good thing they didn't sniff out your former podcast. <laughs> That bombed hard. <laughs> Thanks, Chris will be here all week. Oh, Try the meal. Uh, I love a good pun. Uh, so then they're like, okay, you're good to go. So they're like, okay, Mr. Kendall, you will be first up at 1045. Okay, that's great. So the Fox News guy show, shows up because I think he's on Hannity that night. They light and set up the whole deal. So you're like, okay, we just use their stuff. They're like, yeah, that's great. So they set it up and they say, okay, everybody, we're going to come in and show you how we're going to set this up. And the next thing I know, they're fighting with the TV guys about how they're going to set up the chairs. And I'm just in there like, I just need a power outlet, guys. Like, I don't really care how you set this up. Just give me a power outlet. So they fight with the TV guys for a while, and then eventually they come to an agreement. So it's like, okay, well, the way you've got this set up, I can't get my mic stands anywhere near Trump. And the lady just said to me, goes, well, that doesn't matter. He'll just hold the mic. And I was like... The God Emperor, yes. Donald Trump, <laughs> will just hold the microphone. The one who is committed to saving all of humanity. And I was like, I feel like I should have something for him. She goes, no, he's cool. He doesn't care. And I was like, if he comes in here 
and is pissed off that he has to hold a microphone, and you ruined this for me, I'm coming to find you. She goes, no, he's really cool about all this. I, I, and I would see that he does seem like the type of guy for, you know, he seems like he would be easy to work with. He, and, that, and, you know, you're just nervous at this point. Because right. you're like, you're the radio guy. And not only are you the radio guy, you're like the community Hendrix County radio <laughs> station. <laughs> you're not even, it's not even like you're Greg Garrison, you oh, know? Oh, God. You're you're like the guy that that's basically community. <laughs> yeah, basically senior living community. I mean, right. So you're like, okay, cool. So I'm gonna set this up and put the microphone here. So the next problem I have is the way they've got the thing set up. I can't like see my computer while I'm recording. So I literally look at the Fox News camera guy and I'm like, you don't have to do anything for like an hour. He's like, nope. I was like, would you mind watching these levels for me? He's like. Oh, yeah, no problem, man. I got this for you. That's awesome. So kudos to the hired out Fox News guys. They're from Indianapolis. Right. right? Who sat there and watched my levels for me. I was, I was like, just make sure this green keeps going. Make sure you keep seeing green bars rolling across. Right. Who's so, your hospitality? Yeah, it was great. Because, like, mm -hmm. honestly, that's the most nerve-wracking thing. Sure. Is we had uh, recording problems with the live show. So, like, I did my best to try and get it to sound right. And Harry came through and like Harry clutch. Took, yeah. Man, Harry was man. wearing his white hat. Yeah. Right. And so we, we, you know, we, we have it all worked out. So the next live show will sound a lot better. But that's mm -hmm. like your worst nightmare. Right. Is you set up this interview that you know is going to be freaking fantastic. Yes. This is going to be like every, oh. Yeah. Yeah. And then you don't get it. It's hard. So the caveat to this, I get all my stuff set up and they're like, yeah, that looks good. He'll, and, and they leave you there then. Like you're in this room and they go, he'll be in soon. 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Like the doctor. Yeah. Okay. He'll be in soon. And he's Donald. He can come in with it. So it's just me and the Fox News guys sitting there. So you're like trying to make some conversation. Like they don't care because they're not going to be talking to you Trump. Memes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just sitting there trying to talk to them. Well, the caveat to this is the day before. You're like Megan Kelly, a bitch, right? <laughs> <laughs> they were great, though. They were very, very nice guys. Um, and real heroes in my publicity that I've gotten out of this because they took the pictures that oh, ended up going yeah. everywhere. So those guys love the Fox News guys. R O B K E R O B K E N D A L L. Look yeah. them up on Facebook. Yeah. Or Rob M. Kendall on Twitter. Right. There's a nice photo of me and, and God Emperor. God Emperor. Together. <laughs> uh, so. The day before, we had booked Ted Danson to do an interview because he was stumping <laughs> for Hillary Clinton. <laughs> so, like, and the Danson interview was supposed to be at 10.30. And so the Democrats, you know this, Chris and Greg, you guys have done these these interviews before. Like, they have media people for these guys. Sure. They're just trying yeah. to book people on stage. And they don't even know where you're out of. They don't know who you are. They're yeah. just like, Ted Danson has four minutes at 9.30. Would you like him to call your station? Yeah, it's a satellite tour. And so, Ted Danson? <laughs> right. And so you get 10 minutes, and then they hang up and call another 20 yeah. stations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Danson, so they booked the thing, but I didn't want to call him and cancel because I know I'm going to wake up in the morning and go, Trump's got some donor appearance, you know, media appearance or something. Sure. He's not, gonna, he's not going to be able to make it. So I didn't want to cancel until I knew that I got there and got checked in. So I called the Democrat guy and go, Hey, look, I'm not gonna be able to do this, but Shane, the uh, the station manager at the radio station, will do the interview. We'll still get it run and everything else. He goes, okay, cool. I'll uh, you know give me his number. I'll make sure Ted has it. Da 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 da. Well, 10:30. I'm waiting on Trump, standing in there by myself, and the phone rings, <laughs> and it's Beverly Hills, California. And I'm thinking, oh my God, Ted Danson's calling me. <laughs> so I call Ted Danson, and I'm like, or I pick up the phone, and I go, hello, and he goes, hey, is this Rob? And I was like, yeah. He's like, hey, it's Ted Danson. <laughs> I was like, you were great on Cheers, man. This is awesome. <laughs> he goes, but hey, I don't know if they told you, but uh, I, I'm doing another interview, so Shane's going to handle the the uh, the interview for you at the radio station. And I got a phone number for you to call. He goes, oh, okay, that's great. It was super nice. You can hear him take a pen and put the cap in his mouth and go, give me the number. <laughs> that's cool. So I give him the number and he calls. I'm like, okay, I got through Ted Danson and he's not pissed off. So then you're just standing in there by yourself. And like, it, like it was like for like 20 minutes. And like at 11 o'clock, in fact, it was 10.56 because I looked at the timer on my computer. The moment Donald Trump walked into the room, the moment you became great again. Yeah, it was, <laughs> here he comes, and it's like Apprentice. It's like something straight out of Apprentice, <laughs> man. He walks into the room, and there's like nine people behind him. Right. You know, and the, you hear the guy with the clipboard go, okay, Rob Kendall, Indianapolis Radio. And at this point, you're like, just don't pee my pants. Right. Just don't pee my pants. <laughs> and so he walks right up to me and shakes my hand. I said, how are you, sir? He goes, I'm doing great. How are you doing today? I said, I'm doing great. He goes, all right, let's do this. <laughs> and he literally just walks over and sits down, grabs the microphone. And so I just kind of stand there for a minute and go, 
uh, okay, we need to do a level check, sir. He goes, okay, great. Grabs the mic. He goes, you ready? I said, yeah. He goes, Donald Trump, one, two. Donald Trump, <laughs> check, one, two. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> and so I said, okay, can you... Uh, you have this raw audio? Yeah, I do. We need to just do the whole thing. He goes, yeah. Donald Trump, check one, two. Honestly, you need to send me the raw audio, and I will put that as, a, as an Easter egg. And so he... So he... Uh, <laughs> So I said, okay, sir. I said, um, it's a little hot. I need to turn you down a little bit. He goes, okay, Donald Trump, check. I said, okay, we're good. He goes, all right, let's do it. So we just sit down and start start recording. And so like the first thing I said, it's like, just like a big blur at this point. You're like, just don't say anything stupid. Like, don't say anything that's going to end up getting you on Drudge Report. Yeah, like Julie Borowski, <laughs> token libertarian girl, won't talk to us anymore because Joe, last, last time we interviewed Julie was like, so, do you like sucking? Never mind. <laughs> he asked her. How many she... licks does it take you to get to the center of a yeah. tootsie roll? Pop? Basically, oh. asked her if she liked to s the d. I was like, really, Joe? Really? <laughs> Puerto Rican. Yeah. Puerto so, Rican. Right. So you they sit do. down and you start, and the first thing I'm thinking is, like, don't stare at his hair. Don't, you know, <laughs> like, just, just, like, just do the conversation. And like, the first thing I say is something really positive. I think I said something about the man who's redefining politics in the nation. And I think I actually said a hero of mine. Yeah. And like, his eyes light up. And you can tell he's like, he doesn't get this a lot. Because you'd think like people would be... Not in the press. Yeah. I mean, it's like... And so, press. you just start rolling and he's... Press. <laughs> Ross <laughs> Kendall got an interview with Donald Trump and we didn't get one. Yeah. <laughs> See if you're just nice to people. Right. They will they will reward you. Are you time. saying I'm mean, Rob? I'm saying you did try to sabotage the Donald Trump rally. Those protests were totally out of line. You just say he was going to end the republic. Yeah. No. <laughs> I don't think that qualifies as. I did. Well, yeah. I'm not nice, but listen. I saw an opportunity and I took it. You, yeah, you were trying to exploit yeah. someone who was nice. They invited you to nice. the event. They set up power outlets for you to do your stuff. Apparently, There's, you don't know what the press is supposed to do, which is report on what actually happens as opposed yeah, to... Yeah, well, you're as much lick, press as I am. Lick so, the let's taint. just be honest. Lick the taint of the candidates. By the way, wasn't that great when, when he pointed at us and he goes, those people are the most god-awful <laughs> people in the world, and I'm sitting there with a Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> it really was. It was everybody, the funniest thing ever. Everybody looked at us like... Uh. Rob's cheesing in his Make America Great and waving and shirt. He is like we are front and center. When Donald Trump looks back, he is looking at Rob and I. Like he is literally looking at Rob Kendall and Chris Spangle. And Rob is wearing a giant red Make America Great Again hat. And Donald has to, with a, excuse me, Mr. Trump, with a straight face, has to say, Look at those lying sons of bitches back yeah. there. They're all corrupt. And Rob's doing this. Yeah, he's like got his hand, he's waving, and like people, Trump, Trump, Trump. People are laughing at the at the press because it's so ridiculous. Like i and I have never ever in my life been in a press pit. In 10 years of covering media events and working in the media and sports at the Motor Speedway and politics and comedy, I have never, ever seen a, a quote-unquote reporter wearing two pieces of campaign <laughs> material to cover the event. I, I, when I saw him, I thought, how did he get press passes? There's no, no, like, listen, I, I'm not a, fa a fan favorite of Trump. But, like, I went there and I went with an open mind. I didn't have a narrative in mind. I wanted to see what you it was like. You were way nicer in your article than I thought you were going to be. I thought yeah. that was yeah, the, yeah, most, I mean, you were, you were the most objective you've been about Trump yet. Yeah, no, I, I think that Donald Trump, I mean, we'll get to him later, but, like, I formed a much more favorable opinion of the crowd. Uh, but... He still won't say him. <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, he was rambling and boring and he's our crazy uncle, but... Uh, it's, <laughs> Taco Bowl. <laughs> Libertarians like crazy old but, Yeah, but it, it just was so funny to me. And like you can see, if you go look it up, look up our articles or go to our uh, YouTube channel, you can see them turning back at the press and <laughs> screaming at us. And then at the end, I grab a, a, a video of Rob cheesing. He was so hard. It was so funny. What's so great about this is yesterday, Spengel had probably even more of a fanboy experience with Glenn Beck. Ah, <laughs> so I didn't even get to meet Glenn. A Republican <laughs> who supported Ted Cruz. <laughs> Glenn's independent. Oh, okay. oh yeah, 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 yeah. He was more a Mormon his, conservative. He was on his knees calling Ted Cruz the reincarnation of Joseph Smith. Yes, he's was very, he? Oh yeah, what, what, where was it? <laughs> Utah. Utah. Yeah, and he was. Uh, yes, Glenn Beck, very independent. He's no, so brave. I, I'm not a fan of. I, I think that Glenn is a libertarian-ish, libertarian leaning. But just like Trump, how I think Trump's libertarian-ish, pretty much. 
But I have yeah. mad respect for the media empire that Glenn Beck is still. He's a badass. Well, he, he has. Yeah. He's been very successful. And I wanted to give him a We Are Libertarians card, sue me. I think he would like you guys. Though. He would love us. Yeah. yeah. I think Trump, uh, well, Trump would love Greg, but I think Trump would hate you. But uh, I, I think Donald I think Donald and I would get along. Uh, well, I think if we actually person. talked. I feel like you would be fair. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm very much a Bill O'Reilly. Yeah. You would not be glowing like I was. Yeah. But, no. Uh, you, but, but you no. would take Greg golfing. Right. Yeah. He's a hell. He will, he will be, if he wins, he will be by far the best golfer that there's ever oh, been yeah. president. Oh, he's, he's, a, he's a great golfer. He's a freak. Yeah. Well, because he doesn't have to work for a living anymore. He just has played golf for 10 years. He's been very successful. He's, he's built a, many great companies. Yeah. He, he, why do you think he raised his kids so well? That's right. Right. Because <laughs> so, he, he just licenses his name, and that's his hollow business. So stuff. he's cool. Like, we're rolling. And you can tell he's like he's just relaxed because some guy from the press is not grilling him. Like, right. it's like cool for him to be able to, like, talk and know the next question is not going to be... Why did you endorse Mike Tyson, or talk about the Mike Tyson endorsement right. at an Indianapolis event? So we get through the thing, and Michael, and you know this because you've interviewed lots of people, Greg, you know. You I don't know. ever get invited to interviews, shockingly. <laughs> you have to do one. Better journalist Greg Lenz. <laughs> they avoid me, or, or it's people that are like, I'm not going to be nice, and we're not asking cupcake questions. But, but you, you know, <laughs> with the key to doing an interview, I was trying to get one question where they go, that's a really great question. Yeah. Like, because you know he's been asked about, you know, the lie and Ted stuff, and you know, policy wise, you know, how would you get the Israelis and the Palestinians well, together? The media cycle is so rote, and it's just over yeah. and over. Like, I watched Wolf Blitzer earlier today ask some Republican the same, like, everybody wants Republican unity. Like, Wolf Blitzer wants Republican unity. Yeah. Nobody else cares. No, you know, it's like a media narrative that everybody has to bend to the will of what the media wants. <laughs> and so I just watched tw 12 hours of the same exact. Five right. topics. So it's like, that's all they ask. So about. it's like I want to ask him at least two things that he doesn't get anywhere else, and I want to ask him one thing that's specific to Indiana. And I had found out a couple of days before how involved he was with the Ryan White story, and that yeah. that Ryan White story, while he ended up being a hero to so many people, and it ended up being a, a very courageous figure that young that, young man. Explain yeah. the story. So Ryan White was uh, a very young man from I believe it was Cicero, Indiana. Yep who ended up being infected with, with HIV. Through a transfusion. Through blood transfusion. Yeah. It was before they tested yeah. for that. It was, it was probably 15, 14. Yeah. Um, and I still remember, this is oddly enough, I remember as very, being very young watching the Ryan White story on Lifetime. Me That's too. Like my first yeah. memory. Of that. I mean, uh, he was the, he, he passed away, I think, in the late 80s. Yeah. And, like, Michael Jackson would come to Cicero and hang out with him. He became a national icon uh, because the AIDS started popping up in the early 80s, 81, 82, and there was actually uh, uh, the Reagan press secretary and the press pool were joking about it today. I, I saw it on Mediate. And they were talking about, oh, well, no, it's not the gay plague. And the president just got checked by the doctor. He doesn't have it. Like, they're mocking about it. And they're talking about it in a way like we would talk about Zika or West Nile when it first comes out. Nobody knows what it is. It's sort of a joke. And, oh, yeah, everybody's panicked over this thing. And one-third of the people die. And, you know, and, uh, oh, it's just happened to those gay people. But uh, once Ryan White, gay brown. it was a gay disease yeah. until Ryan White got it. And then everybody went, oh, okay, it's not just this marginalized community. This affects people. And <laughs> Ryan became famous because he endured great, um, bullying's not even the right word, because people just didn't know the disease. Yeah, it was ignorance. Yeah, it, it, that's, that's the correct word. Yeah, ignorance yeah. Is, the, is the right word. Um, people that didn't want him in their high school. They didn't want him around yeah. their, their children. Mm -hmm. And so he actually ended up, I think, was it Hamilton Heights he ended up transferring to? He ended up having to go to a different high school. I think, yeah, he did I think it was Hamilton Heights where yeah. he ended up, yeah. ended up going. Yeah, the Tigers or whatever. Yeah, and um, uh, which they have a marvelous football stadium. Yeah. Right? They are big on their football. We used to broadcast Hamilton Heights football. But anyway, he goes to Hamilton Heights, and they kind of embrace him, and, and, and that Cicero community, you know, towards the end of his life really did. But Michael Jackson, as you said, was a big supporter of Ryan White and trying to bring, you know, uh, a spotlight to this this issue and what Ryan endured and Trump because he was staying Michael Jackson was staying in the Trump Tower um, became aware of Ryan White and actually went to see Ryan White and paid for a lot of his bills towards the end of his mm -hmm. life and became I wouldn't say they became close but he came to know Ryan White yeah and, and so I wanted to ask him about that because it's an Indiana tie and like when I asked him about it, like his eyes lit up. Yeah, he was like, "This is really cool for me to be able to talk about this." Yeah, I mean, it, it really was. It was the most interesting, or the <clears throat> most uh, 
original interview I've listened to, because you know, he gets asked about everything. Yeah. 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 You know, and that, and then the WrestleMania stuff. Yeah, so the, the next thing, I'm a huge professional wrestling fan, was as a kid, Trump hosted two WrestleManias, four and five, in the mm-hmm. in the Trump Casino right. in New Jersey, and then he later participated in a... Uh, in uh, WrestleMania, he's in the Hall of Fame. Vince, right? uh, yeah, McMahon's yeah. Head. yeah. Shaved, man. and I, yeah. which is my new favorite meme is Hillary's face on Vince McMahon, Vince's <laughs> head being shaved, <laughs> and Trump standing there doing it. And so you could tell, like, he was just really excited to have questions that were different, questions to talk about his his professional background, to questions to talk about his personal life, mm-hmm. and um, it was really cool. At the end, he goes into Trump mode and just talks about how really wonderful I am. I know. It was, <laughs> awesome. it was surreal. It was, I was like, is what this did happening? He, what did he say? How is Rob not squealing like a, like a Backstreet I mean, he just, he girl, just talking, Boys fan He just starts girl. talking about how great a job You've I'm You've been doing. very wonderful. I think you're the best person in the press, in the history of presses. Seriously? Uh, he, no, he calls him wonderful three times yeah. in a row. I mean, and, and so you, you wrap up the interview and you realize... I want to go forever. It's literally, it's literally Chris, like that end of the yeah. scene at Field of Dreams when he's playing catch with his dad. You know, like, <laughs> like, like, like I want the ghosts of President Adopt Trump. me! Adopt me, God Commander! <laughs> Instead of, hey, Dad, you want to have a catch? It's like, hey, Trump, you want to have an interview? Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's like, you're sitting there going, I just wish this could go on forever. There's this great McDonald's I could take you to in Brownsburg, and we can go watch Fox News together and siphon 59 cents off it. <laughs> and so at some point you realize, so you got to like wrap it up because you got the guy from Daily Mail that's up next, and you know they're 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 very adamant when you get in there. You have 15 minutes from the time you get in to set up. So the quicker you get set up, the longer you have to talk to Trump because they you know they're just it's a turnstile yeah. of people that he's you know knocking out over the course of two hours. So you wrap it up, and I get done, and I say, you know, hey, thanks a lot. And, and he goes, at the end, he goes, it's just like he said on here, he goes, man, you were great. That was really wonderful. I really enjoyed that. And I looked at him, I said, well, Mr. Trump, in fairness, I said, I'm just a fan that happens to be on the, on the media. And he goes, oh, that's a good point. And uh, the I best, have no journalistic I'm going to call somebody at CBS. You're going to be a star. The best part about this, though, is one of the people from his campaign goes, Oh, well, I'm talking to Trump. I'm, I'm, I'm literally because the problem you have is they tell you you got to get your stuff and get out of there. But Trump's talking to me. But then the lady's like eyeing me, going, "You got to get your stuff and get out of there." So I'm like, "Do I pack my stuff up or do I keep talking to Trump?" So I'm yeah. packing up my cords and stuff <laughs> while I'm talking to Donald Trump. <laughs> I, but I think he's, I think he would be used to that. Yeah. He calls the shots, yeah. Yeah. not you know. Yeah. So so no, then I got not I got, Cruise Girl. I, I've got two more parts to this this story that's great. So the. The lady or the guy or somebody goes, "Oh yeah, it was really great. You should mention him at your press at your uh, rally in Carmel tonight." And there's like a brief moment where no one speaks, and you're thinking, "Is he going to say yes? Please come to the rally, and I will point you out." And then like they pointed him to the next person and kept going. It's like there was like a brief moment where you're like. Well, I've already blown Marlon's campaign off for five hours today. What's another nine? <laughs> Senpai will almost notice me. Yeah. <laughs> so the Good. other best part. You, Harry. So they start going with this next guy. And I think it was from Daily Mail because I saw a link to it on Drudge. Um, that he's asking these questions. And I'm like still packing my gear up. And you're like, what do you do? Do you just hang out here? And the Secret Service guy is like standing right next to you. And he's not saying anything. So I just kind of sat there and watched him interview yeah. the guy from, from Daily Mail. <laughs> you give him a fist pound <laughs> ISIS, am I right, bro? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fist pound. So you're sitting there watching him, and we get out of the uh, the interview, the guy with the Daily Mail wraps up, and he comes out, and he's pecking away, you know, to his computer, and, and the, you're back in the press blare, and I'm putting the podcast together and all this sort of stuff, and the guy from Daily Mail goes, oh, he just asked me if I wanted to get on his private jet and go up to South Bend with him that night, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna cancel my hotel room and right now, and I'm gonna hop up there and da 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 da. And so he like jets out, and then there's some. He must have been a press pool reporter or something, because he's sitting there and he goes, hundred bucks says that guy never gets on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> well, but Trump said he goes he goes. You know how many times I've seen that that Trump says that, and then his I guess it's the Team. campaign manager wakes up at about noon and goes, that's not happening. So I'm thinking, <laughs> this poor guy's jetting down to cancel his rest of the hotel reservation, and then he's going to be told, no, you're not getting on the jet. That is so funny. Yeah. Um, it was just surreal. It was awesome. And they... I, because, you know, Donald, like, he doesn't... Uh, like, I've been around people like him. Yeah. And I may work for some of them. <laughs> where, like, they say, yeah, this thing will happen. Let's do that. I'll, I'll get my people to do it. Yeah. And there's a handler that's like, uh-uh. And, yeah. and then, like, they don't remember. They never think about it again. Right, Donald's yeah. 70, and he's going talking around to 200 people a right. day. 69, I think. Yeah. yeah. But he's not, you know, he's not, he's so focused on what he's doing. Yeah. 
And I'm sure at some point he has to do some level of of business. Right. But he's not thinking about some Daily Mail reporter. I will, I will tell you, I saw a genuinely very nice person under the persona. Like, yeah. I mean, I think there is a very giving person there. And I think if that comes out in the general election, I think he's going to do great. Um, the problem is, I think Mr. Trump is very into the persona of Mr. Trump. Greg, you know, you're a big fan. Would you say that's accurate? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think he's... Uh, no one could have survived as long as he has and not been killed by playing their part. Right. You know, like, and too many people, like, Lou Holtz endorsed him. I mean, now about him and Bobby Knight are of the same plot. Right. You know? mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're sort of like... Patents, yeah. I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, but, you know, too many people are fans of Donald Trump, like Tom Brady and yeah. these types, for him to be like a complete prick. Yeah, it's just he's... He's a, not Ted Cruz. And the other thing yeah. I found, and I think you guys will find this interesting, we are talking before we went on air, I don't think he has a political ideology. Nope. Uh -uh. And, and let me say, before we move on to that aspect, I, I would definitely, out of our friend circle, out of the We Are Libertarians universe, I would be the most critical of Donald Trump. By far. But I don't think he's a bad person. I don't think that he's an evil person. I think that he is a mentally ill person. But I don't think that, I think, you know, I think he's probably a good dude. And obviously you can't raise the kids that he's raised and be a bad person. Like, his his kids are delightful. I wish Ivanka would run for president. I, she someday's going to be a senior senator from New York. And I, yeah, I mean, and she's, blow the doors off. her and Donald Trump Jr. are just so impressive. Eric's a little... Well, there's always one bad side yeah, of the little touch. By round you know, three, you know, something. you lose a chromosome or something. Right, yeah. yeah. He seems fine. One I'm just on somewhere. I don't know. Well, and my favorite thing about the Trump family but, is there's those three that are on TV all the time, and then there's, like, the other one. The wild yeah. party girl, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, no, he seems like he is probably a very decent person, and he is a likable person. And, you know, Rob, you spend all your time around celebrities as well. Um, Greg. Yeah, I mean, I spend so much time around Greg, and I mean, he's exactly who he is. What you what you notice, what I've learned working at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, working around politicians, working at Bob and Tom around like actual famous people, like Gabriel Iglesias, Carlos Mencia, nicest human beings alive. Yeah. Uh, so what you kind of what you kind of discover watching sort of these C and B level celebrities, D levels is that if you have a perception that that person is a dick by watching the media, that person's a dick. If you think that that person is actually a really decent, nice person or a likable person, they are. Like a Tom Hanks. Right. Like, Tom Hanks is probably the greatest dude alive. Ever. He just is so likable and nice and humble and down to earth. That's what he projects. He probably is that way in real life. You know, like Glenn Beck, the couple times I've met him, Really nice guy, really decent. You may not like his politics, you may not like what he talks about, but very nice person because you can always tell. Like a, a he was person. on his knees praying a lot for Ted Cruz, right? <laughs> yeah, but he treats people with respect yeah. and decency. Oh, yeah. Like he, he, he probably you could probably have said the worst things about him, and if he drove by the side of the road and saw you, you know, yeah. struggling, yes. Glenn Beck would move heaven and earth to get you help. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so a guy and Trump like, would ask you to hop in his limo. Yeah, it's just right. a different way of dealing with right. the car repair. I mean, there's so many stories of him stopping buggy <laughs> <money, laughs> in New York by getting yeah. out of his, you know, limo. So even though Donald Trump has like he he started off with a small loan of a million dollars and was and was given this leg up, small. like he does have to have some level of charisma, like ability, intelligence, uh, just that factor that makes him who he is. Or else he wouldn't have ch achieved icon status with, like, Madonna and, you know, Michael Jackson. Like, he, to me, is up at that level of cultural icon. Yeah. You know? It's, do you disagree, Harry? <laughs> are you saying, are you disagreeing with me silently? Or? No, I'm just sitting there like, yeah, Madonna, but Trump's up here, but Madonna, Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan. You know, they're all, like, right here, but Trump's still up here. Though. You, you but think the, Trump's above them? Yeah. You think Trump is above Michael well, Jordan's well, cultural Well, here's security? the other yeah. aspect to it. Yeah. He will if he's president. Well, yeah. I'm sitting there realizing... <laughs> You're literally interviewing the most famous person in the world right now. Right. Like, whether you like him, hate him, whatever. Right. Donald Trump is, I was thinking, like, maybe Tiger Woods, when he was at his peak, might have yeah. been more famous than Trump's right now. Yeah. Yeah. Who could actually hit the ball? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Who, who right now is more <laughs> yeah. well known? And you're thinking, like, not to under, I love use WYRZ, I love our station, it's great, but it covers Hendricks County and the west side of Indianapolis and Boone County and part of Morgan County. And I'm sitting here with Donald Trump. Like, I've gotten more... Like, I was at Big Apple Bagels today, and some guy I didn't know stops me as I'm walking out going, hey, that was a great interview you did with Trump. 
Oh, okay. Thanks. I, I, <laughs> glad you enjoyed. You know what, what? What we'll do is we'll actually put your interview with Donald Trump in the We Are Libertarians feed. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Yeah, that. separate and then tag or tag yeah. it to the end of this interview. Yeah. I mean, it, like you're sitting there going. When you get done, because you don't even realize, because my business partner was like, oh, we need to throw this up on YouTube. I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. And then you realize, like, it was like a big deal. Like, yeah. not that I ask these great questions or anything, but it's just like, you put the name Trump out there, mm -hmm. and it's like this gorilla that everybody is drawn to, you know. People literally that hate his guts have, a, have like, Google alerts set up to yeah. just yeah. be triggered. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like, just the like, moment that hashtag is, uh, like, just hits tw uh, Twitter or Facebook, people are just... Pulling it down, putting yeah. it into Google Sheets so they can actually find out. <laughs> Are you freaking they, kidding me? Maybe, You're a white male. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe they finally got that gotcha moment. Or just fans just going like, yes, finally someone like yep. shows them the truth. Here we go. Yep. Yeah. But look, and I know this sounds so stupid, but I was telling my dad that night. I was like, this literally made this whole campaign season worth it. And it literally, I keep going back to Field of Dreams, but it's almost like, why am I doing all this? And you realize at the very end that you get to interview the most famous person in the world. And you get this experience that 50 years from now, you're going to remember as vivid as the, the day it happened. And you're rubbing it in right now, and we didn't get it because Spangle thinks he's a dick. Yeah, Spangle <laughs> screwed you guys. It could have been you. We could have been great again. Um, they, and they, here's the other interesting thing. When I got in the, stu in, the, in the studio that they had set up, I asked the lady, I said, can I get a picture of you in the interview? And she looks at me, and she goes, absolutely, you can take pictures of him doing the interview, but if whether he takes a picture with you or not right. is on him. And she kind of said it like, he's not going to do it. And I thought, well, I'll wait till he gets done, and then I'll ask. Because it's incredibly, Greg, let me speak to you. He's a lost cause. It is incredibly unprofessional to ask for an autograph or a, a selfie <laughs> with a person that you were interviewing. If you're is it? Honest. It is because it undermines the, um, the reason press have access is for objectivity. <laughs> You know, I mean, right. that's the entire reason for press getting um, priority and is that they're objective and asking the questions that the American voter needs to hear on topics. Is and, that what they're doing? And you ask them about, no, that's the ideal. Yeah, yeah. Just to it's be like the anything. Pre that, yeah, yeah, the, there's the precursor the, of the narrative. Right. It's, it's and it, you know, no one is perfect and the press has, you know, they have to get headline clicks and that's. That's what Donald Trump knows. Donald yeah. Trump knows that it's a for-profit press, and he knows how to yeah. taco bowl for press. <laughs> yeah. So, so I get done with the interview, and we're still talking. So as soon as I get done, like it's just the first thing I'm asking. It's like, what's the worst he could do now? Just kick me out. I made sure I saved the audio file first. No, <laughs> just send it back. Yeah, yeah. Put me in one of his uh, catapults yeah. he's building right so, now. So I just said, "Hey, Mr. Trump, is it okay if we get a picture together?" And he goes, "Absolutely." And I'm telling you, and I, and I realize I'm totally unbiased on this. But if you look at all the photos, because a bunch of people got in Indianapolis, got photos with Trump backstage of these events. If you look at the smile on his face. That's a real one. Compared to the other ones. He's either stoned out of his mind, or that's a real <laughs> smile, because he's cheesing like I mean, I've never seen. I mean, he's genuinely like, <laughs> you can tell it's just like a relief for him. And it's like his first interview of the day, so he's just like, thank God. It's not some guy trying to ask me about whether I said Rosie O'Donnell was a pig, yeah. or, you know, whatever. And then here's the cool thing. Like, the people from the Trump campaign, because then I wrote this article for Indiana Forefront. If you go to the uh, Indiana Forefront website, site you can read the you know the detail what you're hearing here but I wrote this article and so I sent it to the Indiana campaign side of it and they go we're getting this to the national office we don't know if he'll ever see it but we're going to get it to the right people because mm -hmm. we think he would really enjoy reading the genuine joy this experience brought you so if you listen to the interview it's not objective it's you're not gonna you're not gonna get hard hitting questions, but it's, it's propaganda. It is propaganda. <laughs> it's it's uh, Goebbels level propaganda. <laughs> well, no, Rob is a commentator. Rob is yeah. not a journalist. We are not journalists. Right. Well, I mean, we do journalism, but we're commentators. You know, so what we do is covered under the First Amendment, but we're not AP. Yeah. You know, and so like with the Trump rally. Uh, Which, I, by the way, how about me getting on national television in the Stutzman shirt? Uh, right behind Donald Trump for like two hours on National TV. I'm pretty TV. sure Todd Young was thankful for you for that. <laughs> when Bob Knight was uh, speaking, giving his the worst old man speech I've ever heard anybody ever give. I love Bobby Knight, but that was like... He's a terrible yeah. public speaker. Grand yeah. Grandpa was telling every little Johnny joke under the sun and like... My dad was eating it up, though. I think oh, there's yeah. a lot of old school IU fans oh, yeah. who were eating it up. I mean, if know. he had done, though, the Assembly Hall speech in, I think it was 97, and he, you know... <laughs> When my time on earth has passed, 
<laughs> you can I hope my critics bury me upside down, or I hope they bury me upside down so my critics can kiss my oh, yeah. ass. And then drop, Mike drop and it. And then like everybody that. just, Hitler, Hitler salutes <laughs> and goes crazy in Bloomington. <laughs> I mean, it, it was, it truly, because I'm sure you guys want to get to other things, but it was truly was a once in a lifetime experience, and it was so awesome. So great. And it was, I mean, it was, it was just, I'll never forget it, and, uh, I just feel very blessed that I was able to do it. Yeah, that was... Uh, yeah, we'll put it in the feed. And we couldn't tell anybody. That was the worst part. Like, Haley knew, and my dad knew, and eventually, at some point, I had to tell the campaign I'm totally where I was. I'm executive assistant. Yeah. So why were you not able to tell anybody? Well, I didn't want it to get out, and then it not happen. And I also didn't want... I didn't know how if they publicize where he's staying, or what's going right. on. You don't want to be that guy that's like, well, Rob blew a shot at history because he opened his damn mouth. Rob got Trump assassinated. Yeah. 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 Uh, he just, Vote for Marlon. <laughs> <laughs> but the other thing is, it's like... You just you don't you don't know whether am I supposed to tell people am I because you, you at any time you know let's say a heaven forbid a world catastrophe happens and Trump's got to go in front of the media and talk about it they cancel the interview then you look stupid yeah so you just it's like I, I think people would have understood well, well yeah but my yeah. my business and partner that, knew and not was, the listeners of Central Indiana today with Rob Kendall yeah they would not have understood but yeah I don't I don't think there's anything wrong with you perpetrating your propaganda and being a fanboy and getting an interview because you're you're a commentator I mean that's there is a place in journal, I think if anybody thinks that, like, you know, here at We Are Libertarians, we are nonpartisan. Like, I am Libertarian Party, uh, a Libertarian Party person, even though I voted Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, Independent in almost every election cycle, I voted tri or quad, quad, quad partisan. And, uh, transpartisan? Tran I'm transpartisan. Uh, in every election that I've been an adult, you know, you're a Republican, but you vote for LP. Say well, I'm LPIN. I'm LPIN. Like, I like yeah. the Libertarian Party of Indiana and the national chairman, and then that's about it. <laughs> and I know yeah. this will sound stupid, but I literally was sitting there, and I, said, I think I said this to him during the interview. I talked about for all the people that can't get access to you. I mean, literally, this will sound stupid, and you won't believe me, but I was thinking of Greg. Like, I was like, this is so cool that I get to do this yeah. for all the little guys. I mean, I'm a little guy, you know, in the big scheme of things. I'm not Sean Hannity. With a tiny board, yeah. small hands. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's literally the best. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. literally just like, how often? This never happens that, that, that this, you know, for once... We got an opportunity to, to be front and center. Exactly right. I mean, getting credentialed to go to the Trump rally for me was sort of like... Surreal. Yeah. It was great. Like, it's, so, you know, Greg doesn't... I don't think you have a lot of experience being in press pools and going to events like the He's Trump He's a veteran rally. journalist. No, no. <laughs> I, I'm an instigator, I guess a commentator that ends up burning bridges. <laughs> but see, I love it. Like, I, when I worked for Abdul, and I did that for four years, and I was in 2007, 2008, going to every single event I could possibly go to to roll tape and just be in the the atmosphere to kind of get a sense and talk to people. Uh, you know, I talked to Joe Donnell. I was the only person in 2000 and 2008 to go to all three state conventions, and I talked to Joe Donnelly, who's now the senator, and, like, I got a sense of who he was and, like, that helped me give a better opinion years later when he was in the Senate for, in 2012. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it just I love going to events like that. And By the so, way, remember we almost got Abdul kicked out? We were going to start shouting Trump, Trump, Trump through the Black Lives Matter from Tenor. Yeah, so, protesters. that would have been epic. <laughs> so the, the rule is if you, if you see a, a, a tr protester causing problems, you surround them with Trump signs and yell, Trump, Trump, Trump. So we almost did it to Abdul. So we hard. probably could have got him kicked out, too. Easily, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but so I used to do that and I loved it and I got to see all the presidential candidates on both sides in 07 and 08 including Obama at our at our alma mater at Plainfield High School and Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton and I've missed that I love that I like the journalistic side of politics far more than I like the direct action party politics side uh, it's it's much more my skill suit and much more what I like I'm more of an independent minded person and uh, so for me, to get credentialed with We Are Libertarians by a the leading Republican presidential campaign, the presumptive nominee, yeah. the presumptive nominee Got at that it. point, yeah, to go and cover the event with little old We Are Libertarians for me was like, wow, this thing's actually starting to like people are going to take us seriously at some point. This could work, even though our name is We Are Libertarians. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know. Well, Shell put us put that in there. Yeah. 
He Did said he? there were libertarian bloggers there. Did well, he? I didn't see that. Well, the, that was part of the cool thing for me is I got to sit next to you guys up on the stage, and that was priceless. Yeah. Spangle and I sit there, and he turns around and tells everyone to turn around and look at us. And <laughs> look at Lion <laughs> Rob and Crying Chris. <laughs> I mean, it, was just, it was just great. Like it was just it was so cool that we got to kind of spin that together because we have yeah. a lot of the same views, and it it was great for you guys from a publicity standpoint. Spangle got a ton of hits on his his hit piece on Trump. The tr- it was the, not a hit. No, piece. it was it was very objective because I mean you know he's just not he's not a fan. I'm not. And that was very fair. The yeah. Donald, the Donald wants to love you, Chris. Yeah. I, I think personally, on a personal level, he and I would get along. I think that he... I, I, I don't have a mania about these kind of people. Like, Trump, for whatever reason, really does rub me the wrong way. Triggered. He triggered yesterday? me. Yesterday? Yeah. I was triggered. Yeah. yeah. I was going through some stuff. He yesterday. is going to end the republic. <laughs> he is a modern Caesar. <laughs> I really do kind of believe that. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Like... There, there's something about Trump. Like personally, I think we would get along, but politically, I think he's the most dangerous politician in modern American history. I think he makes me think that Hillary Clinton is honest. <laughs> and don't do that. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, he, like he, Donald Trump is exactly what Ted Cruz said. If you saw Ted Cruz, Ted Cruz knew. Lie and Ted. He knew what he was gonna do. He knew that he was gonna lose, and so he went out to MSNBC or wherever, <laughs> and he was like. Donald Trump is a pathological liar. He says one thing, and you know, and I think he's right on this. Donald Trump says one thing in the morning, one thing in the afternoon, one thing in the evening. They all contradict he themselves. He dominates all three news cycles. Yep. Yeah, and he, no one else can he, talk about anything. He totally, <laughs> is it's all conflicting. Yeah, and he believes every single one of them because, like you said, the man has no political principle. And so, while I do respect and enjoy the fact that a Libertarian Party, uh, where we have party uh, registration, is like skyrocketing right now. Gary Johnson, yeah. Googling Gary Johnson is up 5,000%. Membership in the Libertarian Party is way up. Like I've, I've sent, personally, probably four different people in the last two days to our state chairman who want to run for office in the Libertarian Party. So I can't imagine how many people he's talking to uh, inside the political apparatus. Like it just. It's... By the way, you guys blew it on that U.S. Senate candidate. You could have had a great one. Uh, yeah. It oh would, God. Would have would have united the party. Yeah. So I. So at a time when you need healing. Oh God. As great as Donald Trump uh, has been for my personal political interests in generating excitement about libertarians by making people never Trump. And looking for a third party option. Who was the senator? Ben Sass? Yeah, Ben, ben Sass. Sass. Ben Sass. I think I shared it on uh, We Are Libertarians' Facebook page today. It's just this beautiful. It is so funny to see Republicans who have spent so long screwing libertarians out of ballot access and limiting uh, all of the citizens to two choices by oppressive, draconian ballot access laws. And like John Kasich? Like John Kasich. And they're all now going. Ah, oh, we need a third option, but we can't get a third option because ballot access laws are too fucked up. It's like, yeah, that's your fault. Or do they do head. a total inside job and it's going to be a twice elected Republican governor? Yeah, but you know, here's <laughs> here's the deal. They have both parties under control. It's Trump is exposing <laughs> as the guy that's exposed how corrupt the system is. It wouldn't be out there. I mean, you have a group of people. By that, by, but the problem is that Donald Trump is a corrupt crony capitalist. No, he's not. Yes, he is. He's all open about by why his he did own it. admission. But he, he admits but he's open that about he, why it is, Chris. Admi- he admits that he buys and sells politicians. And he's the first. That's person the exact thing that he's railing against. But he's open about it's why so it because it works. Because it works. It's hypocritical. He's brought the veil off. Greg, help me out here. And here's a guy who, oh, I'm self-funding my campaign, and now he's got a national finance chairman. Because but he always said he was going to do that once he was the Republican nominee. Yeah, he, he always said that Self-finance a real president. He said once he was the Republican nominee, he would take party money. With, he said that from day one. $300 million in liquid assets, you're right. He can't self-finance his campaign. No one can, but except for like Buff, Warren Buffett. Right. Yeah. But... It undermines his argument with the very supporters, the, the, the you know, my character Larry. Uh, How is Larry, by the way? Well, he's just a stat. I, I can't do it right now. I'll have a snap filter on. What? Uh, you mean Larry's not a real person? No. Though? He's a, a, I do a Snapchat character with one of the filters that I personally laugh at myself. It's uh, very good. If you look at my YouTube channel, Chris Spangle, uh, S-P-A-N-G-L-E, mm-hmm. you'll see... Uh, 
the Larry character. It's, it's a great character. It's every it's every Donald Trump supporter. I wish we could interview Larry at some point. So I was getting pills for mother. And this woman <laughs> behind the counter, she just, she couldn't speak English. She was one of those illegals. And that's Donald Trump's right. They just come over here and they just start selling drugs. <laughs> but, but, but Donald Trump is hypocritical all the time. Yeah, so point. but the, the, the problem is is that now he's least, running for politician, yeah. which, <laughs> and his opponent is a hypocritical killer. She's the first, yeah. first She's, secretary of state to let an ambassador be killed in over 100 years. And what? And That's a little hypocritical, and a hypocrit- the point is secretary of state is to protect state. Yeah, but the my point is is that if your entire election season is built around, yeah, he's a pile of shit, but she's... A quarter inch more of a pile of shit. Thomas than Donald Jefferson Trump. bought a newspaper to have it planted that John Adams was a transvestite. And <laughs> how do you know? I mean, he wasn't? I'm saying that politics has never changed regardless of era. It just gets whitewashed because of history. You're, you're not. The attacks, you're not so. making an argument. Thomas Jefferson is we revered is, as the higher elite above thinker of all. He wrote parties. the Declaration of Independence, and yet he also bought a newspaper, Freedom of the Press, mm-hmm. mind you. To plant a rumor that John Adams was a transvestite in their election. The freedom of the press was that he did have the ability to launch his own newspaper. To control it and buy it. <laughs> <laughs> but you could have a competing news outlet. You could. But right. I'm saying, like, we, we expect this unrealistic um, higher level, like a platonic ideal of politicians, and it's never going to happen. But the problem is that I expect my candidate Your to have Gary some... Johnson. But I expect... Yeah, the status I, who makes you make I, the case. I expect yeah. my president... To have some level of... Are you uh, trying to say Gary can't win? It's a waste of vote. I'm saying Are you that, to say that Donald, Donald Trump... Donald's not making oh. make a cake. And that's why we'd go for the How can you Donald Trump... Gary Johnson, he's made let me, you let me finish. Cake. Let me finish. <laughs> Donald Trump is a pathological liar. He's a politician. He is a narcissist. He's a politician. He is a corrupt crony capitalist. Politician. Oh, politician. And Hillary Clinton is the exact same thing. So please tell me how you, too... As principled people, as libertarians, uh-huh. who hold the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, so close to your heart that you've got it tattooed on your nipples, how can you possibly support somebody who has zero principles, who is a complete flip-flopper, who cannot be trusted on foreign policy as a result, he cannot be trusted on... The Supreme Court pick. Did you he see Cato be, said he that he was the best non-intervention? Inter- but the problem candidate. is, how do you know that they, that his pol- his policies have changed three times since then, Gary, Greg? Gary Johnson used to be a Republican. He's not anymore. We're not He's talking about Gary Johnson. We're talking about Donald <laughs> Trump. There are and no that, good choices. And that's why I support Daryl W. Perry. He hasn't changed. He's on, you know, he's principled. I like Daryl. Yeah, but he's principled. Stop he's principled. That. Okay, but, but at, at a certain point, you listen, to their point, and you know, you watched me in action in, in the local LPI in here over the last few months. Kingmaker. You, you guys are party bosses. You got, Not me. You've got to have some level of pragmatism. You've you got to play a certain level of game to win. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you do have to be tethered to something. And what is Donald Trump tethered to other than the higher good of Donald Trump? But you're missing... The W. But, but the you're, you're, yeah, but what does that mean? That That is a... That is Donald Trump's win. No, it's yeah. real politic. It's real politic. Like li- real politics, something where you are not ideological is that you look at the existing situation and what is the best we can make out of it, and we're going to look inward. What is best for us? We don't care about globalism. He's a rejection of globalism, multiculturalism, political correctness because he sees a mob mentality coming out of society that is telling a bunch of people that aren't really sure that's the best thing that they better shut up or they're going to ruin everything about their life. And that's what feels so good is he's hitting back against people who really don't have control, but use the collective to manipulate behavior. And and here's for what good though. But here's the other thing. And, and Greg, a, a Greg, higher minimum wage? No, 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 no. For that, listen. Like there are there are societal effects. Like everything adds up in the aggregate. Right. The problem right now is the way we're trending is. I love the. I mean, I love Gary Johnson on paper. Other than the cake, and I love the LP. I love the LPIN. I love the LP. They're I don't know why we're talking about the Libertarian Party. We're not talking no, no, about no, the Libertarian no. Party. No, so what choices do I have? Right, right, right. So I am in a world. My choice is that I face a really 
difficult choice going forward because it's a Democrat party, which is always going to be Democrat progressive and keep pushing forward. And it certainly looks like it's becoming the party of social uh, democratic socialism like Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. That is the party that is the youth vote is exciting and a bunch of people who are demanding an equal outcome. I look at right now the Republican Party. The Republican Party is all of a sudden pissed off that they're no longer conservative when they haven't been conservative since Ronald Reagan, if then. You know, that's not like they've actually been, I mean, even Reagan had big deficits, mm -hmm. you know, because he didn't accurately predict how uh, quickly the surplus or the, how much the growth would compound until later. And so it's not like there was a really distinct choice anyways, but there is someone that says, listen, you don't just have to go along with, you know, the weak you know, because they, they feel victimized and they're so loud, everyone just sits there and says, God, you know, will this person that's calling me a racist just stop so I can still have my business open? Sure. And there, there's been an influence for about probably since it really started when Bush got elected. People were so offended by George W. Bush and the way that 2000 vote came down that they looked at the America and said, wow, this is, this is amazing that out, you know, um, a really popular Democrat lost, and all of a sudden Al Gore went right into the inconvenient truth. Just another thing, and if you look at Al Gore's predictions, we're in that era, they're all wrong. Right. They are consistently wrong on everything. Mm -hmm. Their predictions for society are wrong. And so you say, well, that's the one party. The other party, they were founded on the individual, and they, they've abandoned it when it's convenient to win political elections. And then there's Le the Libertarian Party. Leading to the highest abandonment of every principle that the Republican Party espouses in Donald Trump. He's no. a liberal. But you're missing... Not on taxes. You're, you are missing why people are voting for Donald Trump. I voted for Donald Trump because I want to see the modern, corrupt, elitist wing of the Republican Party go away. They have ruined the Republican Party. They have bought... and so They just saw it in, Indi in Indiana. They bought a Senate seat. I mean, they just buy and he sell... He literally didn't have enough signatures. Yeah. And he got on the ballot. He got on the ballot. Won. I mean, it, and it's, it, it's it, is, it is. It His is. His biggest donor it, was the head of the, it, the election. And, 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 yeah. I and, mean, and yet, in the era of Donald Trump, he won. And people like Mitch McConnell and every establishment wall, Washington politician, at the end of the day, are going to get a better opportunity to make deals that grow the size of government with Donald Trump because he will find it pragmatic to make a deal and win than you would with maybe Gary Johnson or Ted Cruz or but another the, obstructionist. No, I, not I like obstructionist. watching these establishment people be miserable because they have made the country miserable. Because Nelson Rockefeller used to be the establishment of the Republican Party until 1980. Yeah. Then this this Republican, like the crazy conservative 16 years after Gary, Barry Goldwater, who was toxic, comes along and has a different vision. And all of a sudden, he has legs. And the, the, establish, the Republican establishment that exists today is because of Ronald Reagan. It's the same people. It's Rumsfeld. It's it's Jim Webb, who was his undersecretary of the Navy. Right. I mean, the establishment has to be tossed from time to time, and in time, all establishments become corrupt because they suckle on power. Yeah, but the problem is that when you replace, when, when Ronald Reagan came in, uh, if you go back and listen to Reagan in his own voice, you can get it on audible.com, go to wearelibertarians.com, scroll to the bottom, Sign up for Audible, and you can listen to it for free. Reagan in his own voice. And it's his radio commentaries from 76 to 80. And it is just jam-packed with libertarian thinking. Oh, he called himself a libertarian. Right. Ronald Reagan had a, 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 a principled center. And so when Ronald Reagan came in and tossed out that establishment, it was replaced with a libertarian center. Donald Trump isn't replacing it anything with anything other than the cult of Donald Trump. That is the problem. Well, the Republican Party, I wrote a couple years ago in death of the Geo, about the death of the GOP, and there were only two visions for it. Mm -hmm. There was Libertarian, Libertarian Caucus, Justin Amash, mm -hmm. Thomas Massey. The Amash other option, great. The other option is like a Tory version of communitarianism, which is Donald Trump. It's populism. It's going along, it's a, a cultural preservation and nostalgia with while protecting the interests of the largest voting bloc, which mm -hmm. is the baby boomers, right. but then also... Just enough economic um, reform and tax cuts that it, it, I mean, to me, it is still justified that you can say that Donald Trump has, he does have the most libertarian economic reform package, except for Gary Johnson. Mm -hmm. No period, no questions about it. So I look at it and you have, it just comes down to what is the, for me, the foundation of freedom? Economic freedom. 
Self-ownership is your ability to sell, self-finance, and be independent. The person that's most electable with the best plan for economic freedom, which is the foundation of personal freedom, is Donald Trump. It, but it isn't because he cannot be trusted. But he can't on his tax plan. You, he can't be trusted. He can. He flip flops all the time. He, he has absolutely zero backbone. He's he never wavered. He made, he even made back Tom in Trump. The 19, like the nineties on his economic positions. The, the other, JFK was a liberal, the other, a libertarian economically. The other problem is, can he build a consensus of these Washington insiders that you think he is agitating so much? Can he build a consensus to actually get things through, or will he be elected immediately as a lame duck? Harry? My main thing is, like, he's, he's running for the executive branch, yeah. so what can he really do? Foreign policy. That's about it. Right. When so, you're talking about tax, but that's the, the executive it's Congress. So we've got yeah, a man. Congress. We've got and a man he, with we've got a man with one of the most fragile egos on the planet uh-huh. who stews over his Iowa loss and claims that he loses when he just got outplayed. Who every yeah. single slight he for thirty years has been writing letters letters to magazine reporters mm-hmm. about his hands and circling pictures of his hands. That's where that joke comes from. Is he's he has an incredibly flat, fragile ego, mm-hmm. and the slightest slight against Donald Trump's ego is met with uh, a an aggressive protection. That is not the kind of rational thinker that we want protecting the nuclear codes and the military of the United States. Dixie chicks. And? George Bush went after the Dixie chicks. So, but that's different. That's How not is that the same different? thing. That, that's, that is a, a spokesman from the White House making fun of the Dixie chicks and one person and a commentator saying, don't buy their album. Yeah. I'm talking about a person who feels slighted, who, who has an air of unpredictability to the point that we have no. You think that our reputation is tarnished in the world right now? Wait until Donald Trump is president, when nobody takes us seriously whatsoever. But that hasn't so got us anywhere good. good. Not we. Uh, their reputation is tarnished. Uh, yeah, he's I a free have, I'm, yeah, sorry. I I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's going to be. He's going to be in New Hampshire with the pure. <laughs> I'm sorry. I reject completely the argument that Donald Trump is the lesser of two evils, because he is not. Well, you don't he know that. The, None of us no, know. He, but that's yeah. the problem, is you should know. No, before we, you go and cast a ballot before somebody, for somebody for President of the United States, you should have a clue as to what they believe and where they stand. Okay, but we that, never will. T- time out. Did you read the article, this was, I guess, three or four weeks ago, in Politico, about the delegates, it was about the people for Indiana that'll be casting votes. Mm-hmm. Those people in that article were so slimy, and they were so arrogant, and they were so elitist, and I know a lot of them. Me too. They're not fans of mine. They mm-hmm. may be fans of yours because you're very nice. But yeah, I know. I know. Most they of were them. so damn arrogant that I want to see Donald Trump win just because I want to watch every one of those people go away. I'm sorry. Because they are who has ruined this country. But the Republic of the United States of America is not about your feelings. It's not about it. And it's about these you... are people who have ruined. They've lied to the American people over and over and over again. They're more interested in their buddies and their cronies and their special interests than doing what's right for Americans. And Donald Trump is the guy who has totally upset the apple But cart. those people believe that they are doing what's right for the United States but of it's America. Never worked. You may not agree with it's them. It's never worked. I, I know. We sent them That's why to, I don't vote for Republicans. We sent them to Washington. <laughs> Gary Johnson's a Republican. He is a Republican. Right. Which is ironic that you have worship complex for Gary Johnson. I don't have a no, worship he complex. He, he's not a big Gary I'm surprised now. you love Gary Johnson because he's such a status with the cake baking. Yeah, yeah he's such a status. He's pro Donald. Hitler, not pro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, so I'm so they're, they're, Chris, you're upset at the system, right? Yeah, and Donald Trump is the system on steroids. Yeah. Who is just very yep. loud about saying the opposite of what he actually has done for They're all the system on steroids. None of right. them are any different. To me, they're all the That's, same. All right, so we're agreeing, Harry. So why the F are these two violating their principles and supporting someone who is the system on steroids? I don't I believe Chris, Chris, my principles. Chris, you've heard enough stories. I'm sorry, but... you've got to leave. You've got to <laughs> no, go back. No, no, I'm, go I'm back. saying, like, we, none of us know. We all take everything we do in politics on... The, it's Everything's faith. It's just like religion. Right. We don't know what anyone's going to do. Would you have ever thought in a million years that George W. Bush would expand Medicare Part D? Mm-hmm. 
George Bush was the all he talked candidate about tax in cutter, Reagan supply side. As a as a Republican at the time, absolutely not. But had I been where I'm sitting now as a libertarian, I totally would have thought that that was what right. was going to happen because that's what Republicans do. They grow the size of government. Right. I mean, his voice cracked shut. Not, now, in fairness, not me, the most prolific tax right. cutter in the history of the That's what I'm down. saying. Cut after cut after cut. It was that's, so great. So much infrastructure. So and, let's not lump everyone together. Right, and that's why We Are Libertarians is nonpartisan, <laughs> because there are people like you who are libertarian within the Republican Party who are working to reform the, the Republican Party. So many cuts, Greg. Right. Huge cuts. We got tired of winning in Brownsburg. <laughs> I, people just looked at Rob every single day. Haley says it all the time. Rob, I'm so tired of winning. Yeah. I just can't win. I mean, anymore. Rob, you can't run for re-election because... We just can't win this much. Because winning is getting so old. I know. They're ready to lose. They want to be Portland hipsters. Donald Trump is <laughs> the... Has... He, less, been, he, he has, has less of a grasp on issues than Sarah Palin does. He's just totally unfit and unqualified in every category to be president of the United the States. The guy in office isn't? And, so is Obama and so is Hillary. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm saying. And Donald so just, Trump just, just because something in his just because he's the Reagan, yeah, but Carter, okay. That, I'm not. Ma- Don't you ever talk about why? Are, why are you? Are, why are you all assuming that because I'm making the argument against Donald Trump that I must be supporting Hillary? That's, We're not. That's a total fact. No, 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 no. You're, you're talking about like just wanting to vote for Hillary. You're the one who talked, brought that up. She's safer than him. Uh, How is it safer? She's no, 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 that's, that's, like, she's, that's the position she's more of George Brown Will people. said the same thing. Uh, yeah, she's more stable mentally. She has a she, better grasp she, of the issues. Is she? She, Hillary Clinton is the system, and if she is put in place, she will just be a continuation of what we have, which I, is, compl- which is completely but, uh, unacceptable to what we have. It's, it's not acceptable. Hillary Clinton is not an acceptable choice. But neither is Donald Trump, and libertarians... Of all varieties, Republican, Democrat, Libertarian Party people, in my opinion, I don't get it. I don't understand how you can wear a Make America Great Again hat. Because he doesn't share libertarian values. He doesn't even share our standards of mental health. If he were your employee... He's with us on economics. But I don't believe he is because He's I can't. And I, and I, and hey, I, res- I respect that. I respect calls. anyone that thinks they can't trust him. I'm, you're, I, I have every I, right to believe that. Yeah. I just choose to believe a different thing. And I and I believe he uh, you choose to believe that he's lying to us. No, I choose to believe that he actually wants to cut taxes, reform the business tax. He has adopted as part of his platform a thing from a left leaning think tank, the Century Foundation, which every summer the United, the Secretary of State or the State Department brings in a hundred thousand foreign youth to work at seaside resorts, low wage jobs to get mm-hmm. them as an introduction to the United States. Yep. Hillary Clinton doesn't have that in there. He wants to change that to where it's for urban black youth. Hundred thousand kids get. $15 minimum wage job for 100,000 inner city youth and use that program as a job bank rather than as a J-1 visa to bring mm-hmm. in here. That's a good idea. But just because he's he's with us on that one issue, Hillary is with me on drug re- decriminalization, uh, reform of the justice system for to uh, ease issues of people who have been... Submitting to sentencing you know, laws? Yeah, dropping... You know, I don't think that it's good enough, but dropping uh, marijuana from a Schedule 1 to a Schedule 2... Those are things that I agree with Hillary Clinton on. Me too. I, I, you know. I mean, I don't discredit like you want it, thinking she's the safer bet. I mean, it, it's just neither one of us know. I'm not, and I'm not making the argument that I'm going to vote for Hillary because I'm not. No, I, I'm Hillary's gonna... only there because Bernie pushed her there. Absolutely. Okay. And Bernie, but, but, Bernie has been great for the Democratic Party and the system all over. And all the together. other thing is, you don't also don't know when Donald Trump actually sees the price of the drug war that he's like, whoa, 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 want to renegotiate this? Like, how much are we paying for this? This is ridiculous. This is pointless. Why are we doing this? Uh, like everybody's basing but, everything on faith. But yeah, it's all faith and religion. I believe that any politician will say what they need to do to get elected and grow the size of government. That's what they do. They do nothing different. No matter what comes out of their mouth, they're doing that. Mm-hmm. That's it. No it's matter just, what. You, Trump elicits a response you just can't get. Because I can't understand how a thoughtful and rational person can't see what I see. Mental illness, complete irrationality, and a complete lack of principles. He's got that one more election cycle that I think Chris... Full on air. It's, I'm waiting. Uh, <laughs> one more, I one mean, more. he's on my he's side. There. No, yeah. I'm pretty he's much flat. there. Yeah. I mean, I, I I look at you know 
in terms of my political philosophy, mm-hmm. I would say that I'm very, very, very close to anarcho capitalism. The one thing that I really struggle with is private somewhere. private courts and private police. Right. Uh, but in terms of practical practical politics, I don't believe that violent voting is violence, and sitting out the election in November is absolutely moronic. Uh, I, you know, I look at this cycle as an absolute gift in terms of the Libertarian Party. Gary Johnson can get in the debate. Yeah, McAfee for president. You know, if if McAfee, I would it, vote for it, it, it doesn't right matter right if it's if it's McAfee, if yeah, it's right Austin's yeah. the best one to run. Austin Peterson, or if it is uh, Gary Johnson, any one of those guys hitting five. Trey Hollingsworth. Hold on. If any one of those guys hits five percent in this election cycle, then we entered the public financing system, yep. which that's where you check three dollars for the presidential financing. And that gives us a significant money advantage. I think it's like seventy to one hundred million dollars. Yeah. And then that that is game over. That puts us in the in the discussion. And I think that's really possible this time. I do too. Uh, I, I don't. See I think if it was twenty twelve, Gary Johnson, it would be a sure thing. Sure. I. I that before he made me bake the cake. No, it's so. Let like, go of the cake thing. Yeah, I mean that's a red herring. Yeah. No, no, no! It's like Rand it's, Paul saying he opposes so, civil rights. Here, here is the, here is what. That's um, sure racist. Here's period. the problem. <laughs> here's the cake thing, okay? Because he was, he was. It's all he talks about. It's so here in Indianapolis, he tried to explain it, and he has a very well thought out thirty minute explanation on why he believes what he believes, and in American soundbite politics, that doesn't work because all you know is he wants to force Anne Frank to bake a Nazi a cake. So, you know, he's he's so libertarian that he falls into that trap, you know, where, listen... He's actually more libertarian as a whole than the other two candidates, but he had the one 10-second answer, or the 10-word answer right. that kills you. Yeah. So... Read he, my lips. You know, like, that one thing ends your campaign. I also think that he didn't quite expect the challenge that he got from McAfee and from Austin Peterson, who has run a very efficient campaign. And they're relentless, and they, they yeah. won it. Like, that's the thing I like. Gary's running, and to me it feels like he's running because there was an expectation to, but there was an understanding that it wasn't going to be like last time. Because he absolutely killed himself for very little benefit. It's like Rupert's 2012 gubernatorial campaign. He ran all over the state. He bankrupted himself, his businesses, his charity, and it really didn't benefit the party or him or the voter in any way. So I know you – I like Daryl Perry too. Daryl Perry is very libertarian pure. Establishment anarchist candidate. Yeah, he is the most of all the candidates. Daryl Perry is the most establishment in the Libertarian Party. He's been around forever, but he won't even talk to us. Uh, no, we, I actually need to set up an interview. I love Daryl. We actually um, used to plug his podcast all the time. Oh, did we? Yeah. yeah. Hey, by the way, I did want to say congratulations to you guys for winning the uh, the convention. Thank I you. I think that was great. Yeah. I know I haven't had a chance to talk to you since then, but yeah. I did want to say congratulations. That's a minority opinion. We, yeah. <laughs> no. well, it was apparently the majority. Yeah, 61%. My, my you know how you calculated it? Yeah. I love it. <laughs> so, and I think I think Rex is going to do very well this year yeah. in Indiana. I think, yeah, absolutely. Because Rex is something different, and people don't want politician. Mm. And as much as I don't like Donald Trump for all the reasons that I've listed... Donald Trump is the um, the proverbial electoral orgasm of all the tension that has been building. And it is, it's interesting to see Ted Cruz burn alive in the grassroots wildfire of dissent that he sparked, along with Mike Lee and some of the others in, when he was a senator. Uh, you know, there was a firewall, there used to be a firewall between the presidential race and the House and the Senate races and the Tea Party people, and that... That didn't last, but I will say, look at the effectiveness of those Tea Party, not just Tea Party, but those anti-establishment people, the people like Richard Mordock. You know, you think that you want an inexperienced, uh, non-political person to run for office, and then next thing you know, you have Senator Joe Donnelly. You have Hillary Clinton as president. No. I I interviewed Donnelly the other day. in any other state. It's very nice. Yep. I would rather have a moderate Democrat than a far-right Social reactionary. conservative reactionary Richard Mordock. Right. Now, Joe Donnelly is a tax, co- he's a pro business or a pro economic tax cutting, except for like the very bottom end where he would subsidize things. Right. Um, and he's great on guns. I mean, he's not. A and he bad came Democrat. on my show just the other day. He was very nice. Yeah, he's a good he's He a good was moderate. no Donald Trump. He he's a lot nice. like Evan Bayh. Like, Evan yeah. Bayh is very moderate, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I, I just think Republicans, I think your grassroots Republican 
See, the people who are freaking out about Donald Trump are the professional party people, the professional politicians, the professional class. And you can be mad at those people, Rob, but those people do this for a living. And when they say, yeah, we're going to lose the House and we're going to lose the Senate and we're going to lose the presidency because of Donald Trump, is that, a, is that a Pyrrhic victory? Absolutely. If Donald Trump wins and we lose the Senate, we lose the House, is that a, a Pyrrhic victory? Now, I look at it and I go, I'm a libertarian. It doesn't really matter because, you know, I'm not one of these people, these libertarians that say, I want Donald Trump because it's all going to collapse faster. Well, you know what? We're, we're in a society that favors socialism and big government. And so we really needed the next hundred years to tip the scales back to libertarianism. In 20 years, we're going to be the majority. Uh, uh, libertarians, small L's. We have to work on the hearts and minds of the American people to make them more libertarian. And Donald Trump hurts us because the second he starts out, you know, I'm very libertarian leaning. We, we might as well change the name because his brand is as, as ridiculously tarred as Republicans. So there's a Chloe and Agnos has a sister that's 19 said, I'm a Republican, but I tell people that I'm a Libertarian Party person because I'm too embarrassed to admit I'm a Republican because all of my peers will judge me. It is now a, sh a shame spiral where it is now unacceptable to be a Republican. You know, and so the demographics really are in the libertarian favor moving forward if we're smart about it. I, I would disagree on that assessment, but that's just because I think we're at a precipice where my, a lot, you know, a lot of my Trump supporters, I look and I say, who can I make a libertarian going forward? We're a small party. Mm -hmm. We don't get taken seriously very often, even though we run serious candidates and we try hard. Um, and we're in a demographic disadvantage because we're an old country. And so people cling to security when it, you know they're older, and they, you know if we didn't have Medicare and Social Security, the reality is in societies where there isn't some sort of social safety net, they're much less open to libertarian messaging mm -hmm. because their basic needs aren't met. They can't even get right. past security or livelihood to get to the point where we start talking about negative liberties and what government can't do to you. And so for Trump, I see this as I see a Republican Party that is already, it, they can win the middle of the country and lose the election. Mm -hmm. Unless they win Florida, North, or if they keep Florida, they keep Virginia, and they pull, I think Trump will pull off Pennsylvania because of Hillary's comments on coal. Um, there, it, it, it will be a baby boomer election, but at least they can go for a tax cut because if he loses, the future of the country is burning. And mm -hmm. I think that without, Matt, our, we have some a lot of libertarians, but we've seen defectors from our own party go for Bernie. Sure, mm -hmm. you know they're they're left libertarian. A big appeal of a uh, of our party are the left libertarians, and I think collective the collective is what everything trends to. And then there's sometimes occasionally in history there's a revolution for independent you know for freedom, for individual freedom because they can't take the tyranny any longer. Sure, and there's an overthrow. But so we're constantly fighting the same thing, and I see our trend isn't for individual liberties, it's away from. Sure. We get lucky, Edward Snowden, things like that, where we can win a, build a coalition, but I don't see a world where the libertarian message is appealing because we are, um, uh, I guess you could say a bipolar demographic. It's young people who see uh, they're being robbed of opportunity and economic growth, and old people who desperately need Medicare and Social Security to stay alive. But I would, I would argue, tell me if I'm wrong, that if the libertarian message is not winning, it's because we are poor messengers. And if you look at the people that we know and the people that I'm friends with that are supporting Bernie, they're supporting Bernie for very libertarian reasons. It's just that he's spreading the message a little bit better and he's the last major party candidate that kind of speaks to that need. You know, we, we know something instinctually is wrong in our country. We are at the point where the Declaration of Independence was written. Now, we have elections. And, and now they have something to lose, though. Yeah. Meaning? When we overthrew um, you know, King George, we threw off our colonial chains, if you will. It was self-governance, but we didn't have a retirement to worry about. We were a young country with young people who were fleeing for to build a better life. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like it was a bunch of gray hairs. Like, um, uh, I forget what commentator yeah. used to say that you don't have to worry about the USSR coming in, bringing socialism to the United States. It'll come in in a wheelchair. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is what's happened. It's a wheelchair and the baby boomers getting old and the 
you know, a globalized economy has made, you know, there was a great era where that people could save and save up mm -hmm. and get ahead. When you're battling in a global economy, that same opportunity didn't happen because you decimated the German industrial um, c competitor, and we had a we had an absolute monopoly on uh, industrial right. output. Right, destroyed industry. Right, and so we look at a world where we say it's not a world anymore where Americans look at growing the pie; they look at what part of the pie can I get. Right, and I, you can't sell libertarianism to that. There's something to lose: fear right. of loss. Yeah, fear of loss, and they want to see they, look, they claim and want to see examples. They want to know, like, well, where have libertarian ideas have won? Where, where have they tried this? Even though you can show them, like, hey, let me show you where socialism has failed. Let me show you Venezuela. But it's something that it, they felt. If you can't teach someone a metaphor, if you can't give someone, like, that's why I talk about libertarian solution and policy being the only shot we have. Mm -hmm. If I can criticize the hell out of whoever I want, if I can't show you what mine looks like so that you don't feel anxious stepping off into that new era, I have no shot because you're going to say, well, the devil I know is worse than the devil I don't. That's why he's always showing them that thing. Well, so I said that this the other day. Because Haley actually said this. He said, you've got to. Beautiful woman. She's so great. So <laughs> wonderful. Uh, she said, when you're, when you're selling politics to people, you've got to show them it's like selling a product. You've got to show them how it will be if they vote for you. What, then that's not features. Yeah, not, not the past. But the future, if you're buying the product, she says, that's something Trump does very well, is he says, if you vote for me, then this. You know, yes, it, Carrier is not going to pay 35% to ship their product into Mexico, but he sells that vision of mm -hmm. if, then. Yep. And, and mm -hmm. politics is a lot of times becomes about the past. Well, it becomes like, criticizing your opponent and never presenting your vision. Yep. And that's yeah. who always loses. The person that can present the vision, have a game plan, wins. Like Thomas Jefferson actually founded the University of Virginia and he was just on the board. He was invited to a meeting, but because he had the plan in place, he dominated the meeting, dictated the terms, and that's why now you're a Jefferson scholar and you stay in the rooms he himself designed in the rotunda. And it lives on to this day. And it's that's the problem with libertarian messaging is it's we critique everybody else and for whatever reason the way our um, philosophy is based it's a negative if we propose an incremental solution to our hardest core base. And yeah. so we get undermined by our supporters, and then we get undermined by our opponents because they're mm -hmm. saying, well, that's, where does this ever work? Exactly. And that's what the beauty is about the Free State Project, of everyone concentrating all these libertarian ideas to one location and trying to do something about it. To be that beacon, you know, like, hey, look, look what they're doing in New Hampshire. See what they're doing in New Hampshire? We can be this way, too. For me, Donald Trump, if he does, yeah, and it's the same thing. Like, they are the thing for us to point to. Mm -hmm. It's tough, though, because not it, the thing about libertarianism, when it's brought to its logical conclusion, is how difficult it is. Yeah. You are, are responsible for a lot of things in your life that with government, it's, you know, even though it's done poorly, it's taken care of. It doesn't, you know, you don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. You know, courts and, you know, providing for yourself and currency and all these things that go into a government that have, like, organically arisen in a culture to conduct trade, to have uh, enforceable contracts. When you remove these institutions, if you do it quickly, you end up getting a French Revolution where they cut off people's heads yeah. and demand equal outcomes. Mm -hmm. If you do it incrementally and in a way people can acclimate to, you can sell a, a negative liberty. You can sell, hey, you'll have more personal freedom but you may not have an uh, cost of living adjustment to your social security. Right. And that's what concerns me the most is I feel like we're at the precipice of, it's already, the Democrats start with 242 electoral votes if they run against Ted Cruz, which means if they carry Virginia or Ohio, it's over. Right. Yeah. With Donald Trump, even though we may not know what he, I don't know exactly how he govern, would govern, no one does, I at least have a new Republican group that's currently the only thought leaders within the Republican Party are the Liberty Caucus. His election gets rid of the neocons, it gets rid of social conservatives, and it leaves a party that's having an identity crisis and there's only one group that has a consistent philosophy. And it's Justin Amash, Rand Paul, Thomas Massey, Mike Lee to an extent. And that is a new era where I can sell libertarianism to people because I can package it in a nostalgic way of a revolution, the founding revolution, like mm -hmm. Austin Peterson does. Sure. Mm -hmm. I sure as hell cannot sell that instinct to a group of Bern, Bernie bros sure. that want free college. Yeah. And that's what worries me the most. Right. Mm -hmm. Seems intelligent and well thought out. That's why I let Greg take it.
Because yeah. you know it's not coming from me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think people are missing that because I am so suspect that we're ever going to be able to sell libertarianism to people that have something to lose. Mm-hmm. It worries me all the time. I don't know how you do it. Right. Unless it's societal overthrow, and that's even worse because then they'll go to the first person offering security that comes up. Yeah, I mean, that's the argument that I've always made to people who just want to burn it all to the ground, people like Maya. Yep. It's... It, People are not are not ready for libertarianism. No, they haven't. You know. Wait till they can't use that dollar to buy something, and they have yeah. to go out and raise their own chickens to get eggs. Yeah, I we're mean, gonna well, love socialism. Part, and libertarians will be there with with Bitcoin or Dogecoin, depending <laughs> on if you like. That. They'll be there. Your, but what Greg said in previous podcasts, that your community going to people, talk to them, like, hey, you can't use your dollar anymore. You're tired of walking around with your wheelbarrow of Harriet Tubman twenty dollar bills. You know, hey. Here's some Dogecoin. Here's some Bitcoin. Here, trade with this. I'll accept this, but mm-hmm. those institu- those are institutions in a society that arise organically. And until people mm-hmm. trust them, they'll never be willing to go to something that isn't already a trusted alternative. Yeah, yeah. And that so that's and now Chris is uh, coloring little Brett Bittner with a Hitler mustache. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So libertarians are sitting there. They're waiting in the wings. They're waiting for the system to collapse. And when they do, when it does. They'll be there to help pick up, to show everyone, like, hey, this is how we do it. This is how community comes together. That's, that's what libertarians are going to do. Right, and they have to, because if we don't, we lose. Right. Forever. Because yeah. there's no coming back from democratic socialism. There's there's never been a country that's adopted it and then slowly implemented, con- like, uh, libertarians, a yeah. society. Yeah, they've already, they, they've seen the, the, the pit and slowed it down, mm-hmm. but they're still going towards the pit. And the other reason we're going not going into the pit is because we're all the world reserve currency. That's about it. That's the only thing that's stopping us from going into the pit. Right. We are the status quo that has everything to lose should the system fall, and that's where you see the opposition from the from the people like Hillary Clinton, from the people like um, uh, I mean, hell, Trump appointed a Goldman Sachs financier to be his campaign finance manager, which just and, he, and the guy voted for Hillary in the two thousand eight. Yeah. But at the end, in fairness, of the, I did too. At this Operation Chaos. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't oh, see that. Greg, Greg, Sorry, I was getting re- removed. Trigger. Yeah, like, Are remove, you kidding remove. me? You're a white male. <laughs> you're, a, you're a white male. <laughs> Don't talk to me or my Canadian son ever again. <laughs> no. It, it is funny, though, because Chris is the mo- one of the most rational people I know, but... Donald Trump, by deciding to run for president, has triggered him yeah. to the point where it's like, I mean, he he is the he's the one that preaches it more to me than being respectful to, respectful to other people's views. <laughs> but Donald Trump has suspended him. everything. I hate him. Everything's it's, out it's the door. Jihad. Yep, it's you've issued a fatwa <laughs> on the Republican <laughs> presumptive nominee. Dear leader has issued a hit like Vladimir Putin. The libertarian Putin wants to take out Trumpster. I, I just like Trump. because I just don't mm-hmm. see that most Trump voters have. To to me, they are. Duck Basic, Dynasty well, No, not that. They are Triggered. Democrats mm-hmm. who are, uh, they want free stuff too. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They are, Trump people are no different than Bernie bros. And that is why you see people who do have some level of, you know, libertarian values, like a Ted Cruz, like he is a neocon out, the, Ted. out the wazoo, but. Uh, yeah. So many he, lies. You, you, no, you can't. You, no, this is where the inconsistency with you two starts. <laughs> Don't drop me into this. No, you can't roll your eyes about Ted Cruz and that he, when I say he has some level of libertarian values, and then you try to stick up for Donald Trump's libertarianism. Greg, <laughs> <laughs> well, the only thing I would argue Ted Cruz has libertarian principles on is the economic reform and Trump's package. Not kidding, like his his economic or his tax plan got scored better by CBO. Than Ted Cruz's. Mm-hmm. Jeb Bush's got scored better than Ted Cruz's. And Ted Cruz and I only agree on economics. He was the guy who was supposed to be Mr. Uh, non intervention and all of a sudden talks about turning the sand, making the sand glow. Right. Where Donald but, Trump says, Cato quotes, gave the best quotes. They're like, this is the only guy, like, we cannot believe the reality TV star, the only guy saying, maybe we should make other countries pay for our military or for what they yeah. use, right. our umbrella of protection. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe we shouldn't be. You know, waging war with jihadists and giving them something to unite around. And it's like, 
the reality TV star that everybody thinks is a buffoon has four companies that go bankrupt and loses his casino licenses in Atlantic City is the one so, rational mind within the Republican Party. And yes, he is, as Rand Paul said, the orange-faced buffoon. But yeah. what does that say about the state of the... Was there anything left to save anyway? Right. Right. right, you know, yeah. and luckily there's a few, right. you know, principled people that have stuck around and are willing to be uncool. Like, um, Kat, or can I say her name or no? Yeah, go ahead. Like Cat, you know. No, trust me, she wants to be on the show so bad. Like Cat's the perfect representation of why it feels good to be a, a Trump supporter. It is so toxic to be considered a Republican in, you know, at cocktail parties, or to say you're a Trump supporter, or, mm -hmm. or to say that. No, you know, I actually liked Ted Cruz before he ran for president because he did have some very appealing Republicans or uh, libertarian positions. And you watch a group of Carl the Cucks stand around and say, are you freaking kidding me? I'm going to go right on Tumblr. And so <laughs> Donald Trump is, yeah. is that one guy who none of, he scares, the reason he scares people and terrifies people is there's nothing you can pin him on because he spent his whole life making sure of it. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. He's, he's, it doesn't matter what you think. Public opinion doesn't work. And what's even more scary to him is there's this big majority that's been waiting for it. Mm -hmm. He's like, I was saying in chat, what feels so good about Trump is it's like watching the Portland hipster in his scarf get punched in the face over and over. And it instead of people coming to his rescue, they're like, God, this is just, it feels so good. <laughs> well, I, no, I, I agree. Like, somebody like a Milo Yanovich from Who? Breitbart. Who? Oh, he's... Milo, you know. He calls Trump daddy. Um, he's a gay... My, Milo's amazing. He's the uh, editor, tech editor for Breitbart. Oh, he'd like you. Yeah, oh, I, know. Well, My, I know. Milo loves a black man with a, you know... Yeah. Uh, I am a Christian, and I can do stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, he's yeah. On a, I have he's tweeted on a at Milo my big hands, you know, when he's <laughs> he's the greatest thing I've ever seen. Milo and uh, Breitbart and and those and Trump and these people feel good, but y you know it's the argument about how to win friends and influence people that we just kind of started. By by being more aggressive, it just pushes the other side to be more aggressive, and yeah, it does feel good that we have our own trolls now on the right. That are good. But... Because I'm so tired of bad Republican messaging. Right. Yeah. But at yeah. the same time, does that that just pushes people further into into their caves. Now, I do understand the argument that, that James Neese made recently about brutalism is that there are some people that you just shouldn't waste your time arguing with. Yep. Yep. You know, and that they should be treated with disrespect. Is They're because, a strategic tool. Right. Mm -hmm. But... You know, we we have have been known to be internet bullies occasionally. What? But, but it's strategic. But does that make our ability to message libertarianism to a certain segment of people more likely or less likely, as opposed to trying to, to not be corporate, but just be nice? Love it or hate it, our whole model is irreverence and sure. <laughs> and i mean think about it we aren't libertarian solutions we aren't tom woods we are right. not socially acceptable libertarianism yeah we are to baby boomers to to most people because they can't send them our show unless they know their sense of humor yeah because yeah. they may have to apologize for us. Yeah. We love it or not, yeah. like, like it or not, we're the Donald Trump of the Libertarian Party, bro. <laughs> I know, well, I know. And it's like, so it's, it's kind of, like, it's like, you know what? It does feel good because we've been doing this for a while and we've gone through the same bullshit and we didn't give two shits. No. So, no. And, and it is true. I mean, there you do at a certain point go, I'm just going to be me and I'm going to be open and I'm going to be honest and I'm going to be mm -hmm. authentic and some people aren't going to like it and I'm going to have old ladies screaming at me at Libertarian conventions about it. But Very old lady. I'm going to be happy because I'm not built a prison <laughs> of political correctness. I no longer will let society and the collective rob me of my soul. Yep. I'm going to terrify the shit out of them until they're afraid to talk up again. Uh, although, art piece. It's an art piece. Although it's an I will, art piece. I will say that the uh, that aggression has turned me into a less nice person that I've tried to recapture over the last couple right. of weeks. I'm like... But, Listen, I need to get back. Politics makes me a bad person. It I mean, does. It makes you a yeah. terrible human being. But you don't want to go on the offensive all the time. That's kind of saying everybody. Not yeah. you. Right. If you go on the offensive all the time, the collective will win. Yeah. Pick a page you can only Trump. do it once in a while to push them back and make them retreat to give you space. I mean, you can't say that you want to cut taxes because supply-side reform encourages economic growth. It's immediately you hate urban black youth and want kids to starve. 
Yep. This gives you the political cover in the bully pulpit to say, I'm not saying anything because Donald Trump might say that blood's going to come out of my vagina on national air. <laughs> you know, like, at, a, at a certain point, as long as it's strategic and it's not continual, it is productive because it keeps your opponents frozen. Right. And it gives you the buffer you need to actually get, for once, the open opportunity to say, listen, it's not stupid to be a Republican. It's not stupid to be a Democrat either. The fact of the matter is we can prove with science that if you cut taxes, it grows the economy in the long run and you're more free. Mm -hmm. Just like we can say that if you stop gays from marrying, it's still going to happen anyway. You know, free speech works both ways. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you do need, it's like we always said, the rabid dog gives you the coverage you need to get a fair shake to present your message. Yeah. And Donald Trump is uniting a group of people who are so sick of hearing about, the you know, news. oh, we need, you know, the, the academics and their ideas of social planning being implemented in our schools and watching it wreck community after community after community. Mm -hmm. But if you dare point out evidence, you're a racist. Right. Yep. It is a natural response to that inclination. There's nothing wrong with a little righteous anger. As long as it's strategic, because if he continues, it's counterproductive and mm -hmm. we all lose. Right. Mm -hmm. If yeah. he does it and gives us room for Gary Johnson, he's giving Gary Johnson a chance to present the message without being called a Ron Paul racist. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I just got a text from Haley. Rob told me to text you to wrap it up. She's yeah, telling to me to go home. <laughs> I said, okay. LOL, but you forgot chocolate, and that's just a blatant mistake on your part. Did I mention that Haley's a basic white girl? Tell her I'll be over later. 23. Anyways. Uh, Whoa! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Wait, Harry's, Harry's walking into the podcast. Where the white women at? <laughs> uh, so, uh, final thoughts on, uh, you know. How do you feel? Because <laughs> I know it has been bugging you. Oh, no. I, I, I needed to get it out. I. You do. I at the end of the day, if Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton is the president, it really doesn't matter. It, it, I think that Donald Trump is somebody that does bring me a lot of paranoia and angst because he, he doesn't seem to be mentally stable, and I don't want somebody like that in charge. He um, has a lot of Nixon in him. You know how I've always talked before I've been desperate for, you know, we are the worst because we, we elect representatives. Sorry, you gotta go. No, you're good. Go for it. Now, no. All I'm going to say is I've been crying for a president to not tell the rest of the world exactly what we're going to do and then go do it and then are stunned when they try to prevent it. I want Nixon to let it leak to the Soviets that he had Alzheimer's and was ready to hit the button at any time <laughs> on purpose to back channel so they were scared shitless. <laughs> Donald Trump, for lack of a better word, is, is Red Robert Green and realizes that if you cultivate an aura of unpredictability, everyone just stands there afraid to move. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And that's the best possible thing that can happen to our foreign policy. Yeah, but how about our domestic? <laughs> right here. He's not ensuring domestic tranquility right now. No, either. he's created an absolute era of terror. And I mean, if Lena Dunham leaves, I'll tell you, I'll be great. That'd be awesome. Because right. she wants to use the collective against anyone that dare opposes her. And so does everyone that's a Bernie supporter or yeah. a Hillary supporter. Yep. Me too, Haley. LOL, are you wanting him to come see you, or is he whining? He always whines when he comes on. I question his commitment to liberty. Haley. He's supposed to come see me tonight, but it's past my bedtime already. He's afraid of commitment. LOL. Can I, I tell a little secret? And I yeah, go for it. After the Lincoln Day dinner, you uh, should ask Rob where he slept that night. Oh. No, that doesn't seem nice. That could get him in trouble. No, it was with her. Oh, okay. <laughs> it just wasn't his place. Did you get it on at Greg's house? Nope. Next. Haley Next. Who else lives there? In Brownsburg? Who else lives at her house? Dun, dun, dun. Who? <clears throat> Madre and Padre in true Cinco de Mayo spirit. Did you, uh... Vodka and mayo. Oh, she wrote, it's, it's okay, I am used to it now. It's been like this lately since he's been on the campaign. <laughs> oh, man. You guys are great. <laughs> <laughs> we love Rob. Thank you so much for coming on. Let's wrap this up. All right. Yeah, because you were you're twenty minutes late. Yeah, so. that's okay. Yeah, Archer's on. Oh, Archer. it's for a, it's for a girl. <laughs> yeah, <that's fine. laughs> see, Rob. Do we get do we get to meet her at some point? Uh, we'll see. Which one? All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Please take that back. That was for the shot earlier about the bro code. No, no you asked. Back. I was totally kidding. I take it back. Because she's going to listen to this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No.
Uh, <laughs> Harry Price. Veteran, veteran journalist, journalist and radio star, Greg Lenz. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Harry Dipping Price, Harry Coates. End, end it for us. All right, um, let's see. If you didn't hear that in the beginning of the episode, please change your passwords. Two pack, two factor authentication, please, please, for the love of all, that is good. Two factor authentication, everything. It's not the best thing in the world, but do it. Um, my main thing is like I like this election cycle because it was it's for an anarchist like I said it's very hard to like get you know ginned up and like care about what's going on in the landmass known as known as the United States of you know like political discussions but like trump has made it exciting and, and it's awesome to watch you know chris to you know simply like triggered triggered and i watch him like hey man this is just like me in 2012 this is awesome hey you're gonna be an american soon this is awesome this is great i'm sure maya is listening to this going like yeah this is awesome eventually you know you'd be flying the colors to be good uh, no, I'm this not. is back when Harry was a neocon. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. super. Just neo- to be clear, super neocon. Like I'm the one that people had a show sucked. called Liberty Bell. Yeah, Liberty Bell. <laughs> I sucked it up, and he actually voted for McCain. I voted for Bush. Yeah, yeah. That's super. Point, country him. first. Why yeah. you put him on the yeah, black and super. yellow mic? Uh. <laughs> I, I will say, but part of it is is that there is a part to me that is I love Meet the Press. I love the Hill. I love Politico. I love uh, you know I when establishment I was, news outlets when I was yeah. oh when I was a kid I wanted to be Woodward and Bernstein I love I love Jake Tapper, I, love Jake Tapper. <laughs> I would marry him so hard like I would gay marry the shit out of Jake Tapper not he, in the end he would he is such a, a good <laughs> journalist but so you know so I'm like there is a part of me that is that like this isn't supposed to work this way <laughs> you know I, I'm just a You're very a white male news reporter <laughs> they've got the guns they'll do what they want did you okay. ever notice there are no Asian male news reporters whoa no it's true look around it's so their wages are way too high in the stem fields <laughs> that is true you know the wage gap between Asians and in everyone Asian else wage gap. and everyone else you know what <laughs> look out North Carolina I'm an Asian male now <laughs> pay me bitch <laughs> all right, Harry, finish. Um, that's all I really have to say. Uh, once again, uh, please change your Google and Yahoo passwords, please. That's, yeah, sorry. And, um, uh, that's about it. Yeah, change your password. Change your damn passwords. Rob? Uh, want to, uh, it's great to finally meet Harry. Harry's awesome. I've seen him on social media for quite a while. Now, you, when you go to the GOP, you'll have a new best friend. That's right. Absolutely. I do want to thank Greg for being a star at the uh, Hendricks County Lincoln Day. I would like to thank you for inviting me because I was afraid I was not going to go well. Yeah. Watch, watching you get, watching you get body checked by Todd Young was awesome. You and mean when I just stared him down? Yeah. And then and I said, hoorah. And then, the, <laughs> and then the death stare from Lion Pete Miller. Lion uh, Pete. And by the, the way, I do want to once again say... Uh, rest in peace to the campaign of Lion Pete Miller. And it's great to know that Lion Pete started trending around the state house. Yep, you're a brander of people. I feel like. <laughs> Thanks for the invite to the uh, dinner. Thanks, Rob. We'll invite you next year. I'm, 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 no, no, I, no, no, I don't want I you to be a part of any campaign, so I don't care whether I'm embarrassed or not. I'll, I'll take your invite if says Chris will take it. I'll, take take Harry, I'll bring the We Are Libertarians to What's the Lincoln Day dinner. Except <laughs> Chris. And uh, yeah, bring Chloe instead. Oh. Yeah, Chloe will be there. A little uppity, huh? huh? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Rob, calm down. No, it's not about Harry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I have nothing to add. Rob, thank you for coming on, talking about Trump. Chris, I'm glad. Do you feel better? Uh, I, I'll, I'll, you don't, we me, don't have to agree. In my statement. No, no we, just, we're never going to agree. No. No. There's no way on God's green earth I would ever vote for. No. No, I just Trump. mean we, we, no one knows. You just need to not, or I need to not want to chastise and terrify liberals. You need to. Or you would have been at the Lincoln Day dinner if you hadn't chastised and terrified Republicans. <laughs> and everybody just needs to remember that everybody's entitled to their decision. Everybody has their own reasons, and none of us know how anyone will govern. Some of you are fucking stupid, and some of you aren't. Everybody has the right to be stupid and wrong, as long as we respect it. Voting is It's about we, we're we're waging the war on c- civility. We are Don Quixote. We are appealing to the higher ideals. And you have to be respectful of everybody's because it eventually is counterproductive. And that's all I'll say. Um, I will say, uh, wrapping up, I, I wish uh, Robert in here, he hadn't gone to the bathroom. The latest from Haley. It's okay. I'm used to it now. He's been like this lately since he's been on the campaign. Me. LOL. Aw. That's how my ex-wife was. Her. Well, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> you are... You see why he has every reason to doubt your uh, your 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 um, commitment to the bro code? It's fine. She loves. Oh, I 
I, I'm I'm glad that Rob and Haley have found each other. They remind me of Emily and I. They have, you know, Haley is... Somebody's toothbrush and there has lipstick on it. Yeah, that's mine. <laughs> Haley has all the love and respect for Rob in the world, and little old Chris Spangle could never shake that. Uh, I will say, I'm kind of coming around on this Trump thing. It's an ugly family. F off, Harry. I'm trying to clean it up because, you know, I did take some of the criticism at, lately about the show too hard. I'm trying to trying to curtail my cursing so we can get more listeners to the show. I'm going to bleep out the three curses I made. Can we but, start, you know, having the uh, Rex Bell for Governor um, swear jar here? We own your parents. Just put it right here. You swear you could put a dollar in. Yeah, here, I got $20. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm get the door. <laughs> I, I might be in with you guys, based on this article that I was just sent to me. Mexican congresswoman wants to ban internet memes <laughs> from Ali and Bokari, mm. a, a name from out of town. Let's be honest. Mm. Don- Somebody's doing the raping. Donald Trump wants to wants a wall to stop illegal immigrants crossing the border, but one Mexican official wants a firewall to stop Pepe the Frog. <laughs> please, please, no share. Well, not a firewall, but a fine. Uh, Martha or Martha Orta Rodriguez wants any Mexican citizen who creates or disseminates internet memes to be arrested with a two thousand dollar penalty. Uh, she represents a district that has over two million people living in poverty, so her proposed meme ban would deter violence or harassment on social networks, Greg, by preventing the spread of harmful or humiliating images. Mexican Netsians responded by taking to Twitter, guess what they did? Sharing dozens of photoshopped images of the politician on the hashtag lady memes hashtag, including several comparing her to Jabba the Hutt from the Star Wars franchise. <laughs> uh, as Milo, this is a Breitbart article, a control of meme magic is vitally important in 21st century elections. Sure, Rodriguez says she wants to stop internet humiliation campaigns, mm-hmm. but maybe that's just what she wants us to believe. Behind this mask is more than a man. It is an idea and a meme that <laughs> cannot be killed. <laughs> so, I... Memes. So, yes. All right. Rob, Rob is de- desperately texting Haley, apologizing. I have sent her an apology. I'll be living with Spangle soon. I texted her, I said, it's my fault, we started late, the recorder broke, and she said, oh, it's okay. Thanks to Greg for his heroic efforts. Yeah. So <laughs> thank thank Greg. Greg. I valiantly... <laughs> so brave. So brave. So brave. I'm just glad he has a good job. I'm, you yeah, know, like I can, me. Oh, I was going to say, I, was, I raped their ears this episode but by going and getting a new recorder. <laughs> so, all right, thank you for joining us here. Be sure to join us on May 23rd. Hit that don- do- donate button to help us uh, advertise it, drive more people. Uh, do an awesome outreach event, and if you can drive in, we'd love to see you sometime. Make it a vacation day. On a, take a four-day weekend. Take a Monday and Tuesday off and, and come and party with us. Sing some live karaoke. Harry, there's an amazing dream on. Yep. yep. So thanks for joining us thanks here in, in this episode of We Are Libertarians. Thanks to Rob. Thanks to Harry. Thanks to Greg. And as always, we promise to do better next time. All right. Thank you.